Karai Aldemir is quiet and fearless. Hold on. Taking chips without fanfare. He doesn't care. It's his job. Ace is pretty gangster. <laughs> Zilang Chang, quite the opposite. I think I'm the guy who take care of all the short stacks. This game is so hard. I bet I win. That's it. I think with that hand, you don't need to talk to me. You still clapping your hands right now? They operate in their own worlds, working their stacks in ways only they understand. I don't even know how much of that. Today, on this ever important day six, they will take different paths to the same destination. The World Series of Poker main event, final table. Welcome to the party. The World Series of Poker main event is more than delivering with its debut here on the Las Vegas Strip. Lon McCarran here with Norman Chad as we embark on this critical day six of the 2022 main event. Not too long ago, the Bally's Event Center and Ballroom were bursting as 8,663 bought in for 10K apiece, putting this year's first place prize at $10 million. Now, just 122 remain. Among them, the World Series' newest star, Zilong Zhang. In just a couple of short days, he's made everyone stop and watch. I like this strategy. If he never stacks all his chips, he'll easily make day seven. Toothpicks got to come out, though, especially when he's eating or showering. At the outer tables, much depleted over the last few days of play, Effie Litsu sits as one of the two female players still in the field. Larchmont, New York, rec player by way of Athens, Greece. They call her Poker's Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> And uh, we've been down this road, so I'm not going to travel it for long today. Day six leader, James Hobbs. You might as well say here's James Hobbs. He's doing very, very well now, but he won't be doing very, very well later. Save us some time. You just did. Here is our leaderboard brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. We are all Caesars. Litsu in second. That's a major story. Alejandro Lococo in fourth. That's a major story. Robert Miner in ninth. That's a, well, you know. Uh. <laughs> all right, not on that leaderboard. But top of mind throughout the room is that man. 2021 champ Karai Aldemir. What a run he's making again. I don't like his smile. I hate his attitude. I can't stand his table presence. But I do have a niece I'd love to introduce him to. <laughs> he's got a chance for another knockout with King Jack with the beer. Timor Margolin, all in with Queen Eight of Hearts. We know he doesn't lose these. Why do we keep showing these? Ah, straight flush draw for Margolin, and he's favored now. Uh, still, this Aldemir, heartless, soulless, tireless. Turn card, another 10. No help to Margolin. Two-time bracelet winner. Margolin looking for a nine, a queen, or a heart. Aldemir knows he's not going to get it. The river card. A blank, Mark Golan flopped the world, but is still washed away. You know, they have cleared a landfill near Area 51 to stack all the bodies Aldemir has disposed of during this main event. Aldemir, one red chip shy of 5 million with a chip average at 4.3 million. Margolin, 120th in 2014, 122nd this year for 62,500. Let's take a look at the payout chart presented by Stormex. The easiest way to earn crypto will be at this payout level for a little while now. All right, over at our main feature table, it is stacked. To start day six, last year's seventh place finisher, Lococo, seat one with over 10 milli. He doesn't go on tour, he doesn't release albums, he just battle raps. He also battle raps poker, more or less. Over in seat seven, longtime pro, 48 now, Kenny Tran, who is still a student of this great game. Now is the day, man, everyone getting so much better and, you know, so, uh, a lot of material out there. So, man, and I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like a, a student of the game, you know. I'm going along and learn every day and, you know, meeting new player every day. And I picked up a few things here and there. It's never too old to learn, right? Yeah. Rule number one in poker, when Kenny Tran sits down at your table, you should get up. Kenny sitting at the big blind, action Car folded to small. the small blind, Nathaniel Kogel with ace jack. Kogel, 33-year-old Austin Dave. Pro, has three WSOP circuit rings and one child. Tran, Arcadia, California Pro, has one WSOP bracelet and three children. Kogel with a raise to 240, the blinds 40 and 80,000 right now. Kenny Tran calls with Queen Jack, says he's a retired No Limit Hold'em player. But here he is in the main event. 
Yeah. He's pretty good for being retired. Yeah. Here's the flop. Kogel picks up top pair. Tran with a Broadway draw. Kogel credits his poker mind coach, Elliot Rowe, for getting his mind right. Remember the warden tried to get Cool Hand Luke's mind right? <laughs> but he never could. 275 from Kogel with a slightly bigger stack. When Tran won the 10K heads up bracelet in uh, 2008, he beat Vanessa Selps, Steve Bilarakis, Eric Lindgren, Brandon Adams, and Alec Torelli. Cool. Wow. Blast from the past. There's a call from Kenny. Turn cart, four of spades. Kogel okay. checks now. Kogel likes looking at Tran. He's not going to find a whole lot there unless he wants to steal a glance at his watch. Kenny looks like he's going to pass on the free card. That is over half pot Six, from seven, Kenny five. Tran now. Tran stabs at it. Kogel stares at him a bit longer. I, I tried staring at Kenny Tran once, and I had pink eye a week later. Kogel thinking about raising here? He might be, but just calls. Oh. And looks at Kenny Tran a bit longer. Queen on the river, pairs Tran, but he's still runner up here. Kogel perhaps with pot control on the turn, content to check call. Checks okay. again. Tran now hit his queen, so he might be content to just get the showdown without stabbing at it again. There you go. And a quick show of the winning hand. And it is always good to drag a pot with Kenny Tran and chips in it. Thank you. Where are you from? Texas. Okay, okay, okay. You ever played in Texas? Not yet. You should. If you missed Zilong Zhang on day five of the main event, you missed a lot. It's harder to block me than anybody else. I always make good bet. I don't even know how much of that. Every time after I make a decision, I'm, I feel so relaxed. I know it's a tough time for you. I know that. You're good, you're good man. You're good. You're the man. I think I'm the guy who will take care of all the short stacks. You. If I bust you on this hand, sorry, we run you. Pretty good. Can I get a free walk, please? Because we both play Bagra. Yeah, I probably should. Zhang's table will, talk is equally diverting and disturbing. He opened from early position with pocket deuces to 175. Hold it around to John Kiesler in the big blind. Mm -hmm. Jack, nine off. Kind of scary to think Zhang also plays Bagra. Zhang still with the best hand. Kiesler with a gut shot. The poker player investor checks to Zhang. Check. Zhang believes he's got a chance to win every pot he plays. And he plays a lot of pots. I mean, he opened an early position with deuces here. A lot of players would just fold that. He knows those chips are there for a reason. Yeah. Putting to together a bet. 235. Yeah, Lon Giesler doesn't have just a gut shot. He's got a double belly buster. Yeah. Actually, that only sounds right when the late great Mike Sexton would say it. Uh, he was the best. Yeah. My other buddy, Nate. <coughs> Geisler putting a call together. And we'll see a turn. And there's the Jack Geisler now with the best of it. Yeah, they're probably. Yeah, you, like you could put out two flops and two turns. They, they and Zhang could be staring at eight overcards to his pocket deuces. And he will still fire if you check. A check again to Zhang. And he is going to fire, Norman. Wow, putting a big bet together. Bet. 765. Geisler, 29 year old Las Vegas investor slash poker player with a, a business finance degree from Northeastern University. Not to be confused with Northwestern University. One is in the northeastern part of the state, the other in the northwestern part of the state. Norman, those schools aren't even in the same state. Okay, apparently you're talking about different schools than I am. I know colleges, I know universities, I know America. All right, for the rest of you, Northeastern is in Massachusetts, Northwestern is in Illinois. Oh. And there's a call. Big pot brewing. River card. 
Giesler improves to a jack-high straight. That's going to be trouble for Zhang. Third spade out there, and there's another check from Giesler. He's going to let Zhang continue to dig the hole. Yeah, you could put out two flops and two turns, and Zhang could be staring at eight overcards to his pocket deuces, and he still will fire at it if you check. Man, he's going to fire again, Norman. I love this guy. But by the way, imagine if Zhang were your house contractor. Nothing would ever get built. Just <laughs> constructing a bet takes him a month. It's a big bet. And it is a total of, we think, 2.3 million. You know, this is not going to work. But if a blank had come on the river, it's got a real good chance of working. I got to say, with that board's texture, Zhang might have been better off just shutting it down. But he's got no shutdown switch. Tough spot, but he does oh. make the call. Geisler takes that pot. Zhang down to 3.7 million. His stack nearly cut in half. Yeah, and he looks troubled that the chips are going into Geisler's stack. <laughs> Geisler with three and a half million new chips to his cash. A total of about nine million now for Geisler. Now Zhang thinks, how did that happen? In the field now 121 players from the second largest ever starting field in main event history. First place, of course, $10 million. Well, along with Karai Aldemir, 2020 champ Damian Salas still in the game with 2.4 million. Is Salas one of the, the greats, or is he just a guy in a main event heater? Lana, I'll let you know what I decide, and I'll get back to you later. Ah, appointment TV, no doubt. Shelby Wells representing poker dealers and Indiana quite well. Odd fact, she's the only 28-year-old in all of Jeffersonville, Indiana. Kareem Ribé has five and a half million chips, and we hear he's a pretty dangerous player. Odd fact, he's the only person in all of Dubai who owns that jacket. And honestly, I can't believe they made more than one of those jackets, Norman. <laughs> Elsewhere, behatted Dan Smith on his feet with pocket sevens trying to knock out Joseph Altman. He's all owned with Ace King. Almost all of Dan's chips are in the pot. Altman, an actuary here in Las Vegas. <laughs> That's a pro move, moving to the other side of the table. He sees Altman has a Broadway draw. And he sees the Ten of Diamonds on the turn. Dan's still good. The river card. A queen and Altman's gets there with Broadway to double through Smith. And Smith does a full orbit around the table. Always good to get your steps in, win or lose. Altman doubles up to almost 3.9 million. Dan Smith will be left with crumbs, four of them. Big blind crumbs, that is. Even the best take tough river beats. Smith losing an important pot. His title hopes in jeopardy. There had been talk about moving the World Series of Poker to the Las Vegas Strip, and this year it happened. The result has been record-breaking fields and a renewed energy among recreational and pros alike. Perhaps a little less energy now for Dan Smith. He's out. Great Lucky showing up. by the great Dan Smith. <laughs> tormented by Zilong Zhang. Short stacked much of the way. Knocked out by fellow bracelet winner Michael Rocco. Yeah, great summer for Dan Smith. Almost 800K in winnings. 509,000, the biggest cash. 964 is smallest cash. Back to the main feature table. Not to check in on Tran or Lococo, but to learn about that guy, Matthew Shepsky. He got our attention with his love for golf, pickleball, and, of course, family. I got an awesome wife. I have three boys, Miles, Cameron, and Avery. They're three, five, and seven. Our house is a circus. Every day we have an activity usually. Want them to get into everything, see what they like, and just let them just explore everything. Just a lot going on. Kids are wild. It's fun, it's crazy, it's everything. I'd love to have them come out. I'd love to see them out here. I miss them. It's fun, it's fun being a dad. Is it fun being a dad? You always have to put others first. I just want a good slice of pizza and a fresca. <laughs> Matthew in the big blind. Lococo with an under the gun raise with ace 10. Nathaniel Kogel called from the cutoff with ace nine of spades. Shepsky sees pocket queens in the nick of time. You know, under nine bigs here, so it'd be all in whether you're playing all in. poker or pickleball. <laughs> there it is. 
Two other dads in this hand as well. Tricky spot here for Lococo. Ace-10 can't be good against the all-in, and he has Kogel behind him. Seems Lococo was wearing that hoodie when he got all his tattoos, and maybe the artist's ink gun blew up or something like that. Ace-10, aggressive player with a stack. Ooh, that's more of than 710,000 that Shepsky put in. There is a four bet in progress. A million and a quarter. Well, if Lococo had folded, I think Kogel might have called here. Tougher now, plus he's got a kid at home. <laughs> He'd be wise to fold. Kogel dominated, but he likes the suited ace. He's jacking again? Uh, similar. He gives it up. Heads up. Shepsky in good shape with his small end. I don't like the fact that Shepsky likes golf and pickleball, but I'll give him Thank a you. pass because he also likes ping pong. <laughs> Shepsky and the money here. He also cashed in the main events of 07 and 2015. Good luck. And there it is. Kogel folded a couple spades, maybe wishing he hadn't. The Queens are still good. And no help to Lococo, but indeed that would have been help to Kogel. Turn card. Ah, Kogel definitely wishing he hadn't folded. Shepsky is good, but he's got to fade That's River nice. Trouble. Three hearts. The River, King of Hearts, and the Queens hold up. And Shepsky probably owes Lokoko his main event life. Kogel would have knocked him out. Shepsky still has a seat in the main event at 1.7 million chips. Might be his high water mark for the tournament. All right, so the kids' trip to Vegas still on the bubble right now. Shepsky hangs in. All right, tournament summary presented by Zenny Eyewear for everyone. Two million bucks more for the winner this year. And defending champ Aldemir can still claim it. Lococo and Jang continue playing highlight real poker. Jang's stack right now lagging a bit under the gun razor. Fellow gaucho Evan Krenzman in the black hat with ace queen. Zhang started day six as the top stack at his table. He's now the fifth biggest stack. And I hate seeing Zhang with only 45 big blinds. It's like seeing Sansa with only two reindeer. Oh, wow. And look at this three bet. He is poker's version of Evil Knievel. Well, let's hope it's not the Caesar's Palace fountain jump, <laughs> Evil Knievel. <laughs> Krenzman calls all in, and we'll have the best ace. Krenzman trying to overcome that UCSB education to make a deep run here hey. at the main event. All right, here we go. We'll see a flop. Krenzman at risk with the best hand. Zhang looking quite at peace for some reason. There it is. And a killer queen for Krenzman, but Zhang in a deeper hole. And I hate to see Zhang with under 30 bigs. It's like seeing JFK with just one mistress. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And another six, and that is going to do it. And, Norma, whatever happened to poker emotion? That's the ball game, huh? Well, to his credit, Zhang takes the blow silently. Well, to say it's not going well for Zilong Zhang would be an understatement. The mystery of Mojo. One day it's here, next day it's not. 117 players remain in the main event. 10 million waiting for our champion. Last year, 8 million waiting for Karai Aldemir. Between last year and this year, he's outlasted 15,196 players so far. Kara Scott spoke with the champ before play began. Day six of the main event, and our reigning champion, Karai Aldemir, is still in the mix. At what point do you start to let yourself think about a final table again? I mean, it, it's starting. It's starting uh, in the back of my head somewhere, but of course, it's still a very long way to go. Uh, it's very more probable that I won't make it that far, but uh, I will try. It wasn't very probable to make it this far as well. I mean, it's pretty incredible as a run. What do you think has just gone well for you this year? I mean, yesterday I won a lot of flips. I mean, I, I think I didn't lose a single all-in pre yet, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, it's It's actually... More insane than last year. Last year I just had full house over full house all the time, and this year I'm just winning all the pre flip ones. Day six is such an important day. We're going to be going down to a very small number of players. So, what do you have to focus on to get there? Last year I was the overwhelming chip leader. Now I have less than average, so it's a bit different. I just have to survive, kind of. Maybe I'll double up, and then it's going to get easier. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.
since 2003. Only four other defending champs have cashed the main event. Raymer, Hashem, Eastgate, and Merson. Aldemir now a member of that list, trying to become the first to go back to back. When the fields were under 200, Johnny Chan backed up his 1987 title with another title in 88, then backed that up with a runner-up finish in 89. To the, oh. Once again, Karai has an opponent at Sorry. risk. This time, Jack Allen is all in with nine big blinds and ace nine. Far right of your screen, Aldemir King, Jack of Hearts. Uh, we know how this ends. Yep, and there is an open-ended straight draw for Aldemir. He'd be happy to hit any hole cards, his or Allen's. By the way, does Karai have his own summer sweater line there? <laughs> Turn card, a whiff for Aldemir. Not sure we've said that very much. So can the 31-year-old British pro double up against Karai? It's unthinkable. River card, another tray and double up. He does. He is human after all. <laughs> all right. You lost that, an all in. That, that's maybe the tide is turning. I was gonna say against the rest of his host now. He's human. <laughs> but he was God. <laughs> Either that, that, that this is his way of sucking us back in. Yeah. You only run good for so long. Hard. You know how hard this is. Eventually it goes the other way. Yeah. Show <laughs> you how to pop a wrap and cord. All right, to another outer table where the 2020 champ Damian Salas in the very expensive white collar dress shirt is at risk with pocket jacks. Sing Mok Jung with the common white t-shirt has ace four. Salas has to dodge an ace or a four. He's good so far. Salas now an eight to one favorite after the turn. River card. Damian's good and yes. doubles to almost four and a half million. Well, Aldemir might be human, but oh. I don't know about Salas. <laughs> I know that. I know that. I mean, what are you going to what? <laughs> Quiet and efficient. All right, back to Zilong Zhang. Normally more fun than a buffalo slot machine. A raise with 7-6 off to the big blind. Cedric Trevino, the poker traveler with Ace Jack. Good to see Zhang does not switch gears when he is short stacked. Trevino with the Enye, which is more fun than a Buffalo slot machine, <laughs> a 38 year old from San Antonio. Yeah, but the poker world is his oyster. Loves to travel, play poker, and write about it. All right, we will see a flop. 5 4 Jack. Trevino top pair. Zhang open ended. Recipe for action. This is starting to feel like the last days of the Byzantine Empire in 1453. <laughs> a check to the very active Razor. Zhang reaching, of course. That's 180,000. What got Zhang here might be what is going to send him home. Trevino was in financial services, now in real estate, and he chronicles his poker travels around the world. Not sure if he's ever met the likes of Zilong Zhang. Who has? Oh, wow. Playing back. A check raise now from Trevino to 470. No pay jump yet. Pay jump? Zhang's not no, thinking no, about pay jumps. Pay jump. just, he might be thinking about the ending to Thelma and Louise. And here he goes. Ah. Looks like he's uh, going to be constructing his own demise. Trevino has him right where he wants him. And there is the call. Do you feel lucky? Turn card, six of clubs, that pair Zhang. He's like a herd of buffalo when he sees opportunity, but it's Trevino taking the initiative, Norman. Yeah, and Trevino all but shuts the door on Zhang's hopes for this pot. Trevino looking to get the rest of Zilong stack. Well, Zilong is obviously behind here. Just one card to come. He's got 20 big still in his stack. He is reluctantly going to have to look for a better spot. Cedric has turned the tables on Zilong Zhang. But he does make the call! Wow. He's four. So the long, tumultuous, outrageous, entertaining main event road that Zhang has paved leads to this moment of reckoning. He put him on ace four? What the heck? I, I can't believe that call. But Zhang still has 10 outs to live another day. <sighs> Trevino could be the man to take out Zhang. Three, six, seven, eight, red. Zhang looks almost punch drunk. 
One card to come. A king, and it's over! Cedric Trevino, the Dragon Slayer, takes down the one man three ring circus. Thank you. Juan, that was quick and seemingly preventable, but Zhang went out like he came in in a flash. Wow, reputation preceding him on day six, and like you said, Norman, it caught up with him. Boy, it was fun while it lasted. See Long Zhang with a quiet exit. He was crazy. It was bound to happen. Yeah, he, was, he was a fun one to watch five for sure. Four. Uh, yeah, that five, yeah. Five four was good. I knew I had to bluff like immediately when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> he came, he saw, he conquered for a little while. Zilong Zhang, a force of poker nature, out in 117th place. This is a good table. No, really, I Before he come here, I love this table. I ruined it. <laughs> Are you nervous right now? Are you nervous right now? You like, talk to me. Okay. Talk myself into it. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Finally have some friends. Zilong Zhang, a top stack to start day six, out before the end of the first level. Zilong Zhang, we hardly knew ye, but what we knew, we loved. So Zhang no longer a candidate for this graphic. Litsu cruising at 12.7 million. Salas creeping up on 5 million. And the nice father of three, Matthew Shepsky, at just over 1.5 million. And you can sleep on James Hobbs. He'll be out soon. Meanwhile, we've had a flurry of action at the outer tables. Shelby Wells ran into a flop straight done in by Victor Lee. Oh, wow, they're still out. And with Wells gone, Effie Litsu, now the only woman left in the field. Nice run, Shelby. Kareem Rebay living the dream, turning 9-8 suited into a straight oh. flush. Oh. Nicholas Ramsey even made the ace high flush on the river. This is a preposterous game, and I question why anyone even plays it. <laughs> Meanwhile, at table B, we had some big time Brian okay. Kim action. All in. All in. All right, I call. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck. You guys think I'm going to win? An ace for Kim set up a double elimination, bolstering Brian and sending two players home. Hitting yeah. the door, Michael Rocco out at yeah. 94th, and Andrew Ostomchenko, 93rd. Yeah. And this Brian Kim character, keep an eye on him. He has a second or third place field in him. I know these things, Ron. Fewer yeah. than 100 players now from the second biggest main event starting field ever. Bust out money, 73,000 now. Taking a look at Alejandro Lococo's GPI, the Hendon Mob bio board, the rapper now is quite the poker figure. Born in and spends most of his time in Argentina, but hanging out in Italy right now. You remind me of the very famous uh, mo uh, the, uh, movie star. You remind me of a very famous movie star. Yeah? Yeah. Borat, you know? Borat? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Borat, come to America. Very nice. You know him? Not impressed. Huh? <laughs> He's not no. a movie star, but he loves the stage. Yeah, suelto pas clásicas como hacha en medio evo. Llegó papo de nuevo, men le sigue poniendo huevos. Ellos no entienden que rima y lo prende fuego. Traje la mano de Dios, me siento como el Diego. Me prendo, men, me desprendo, men. Cuando improviso me deslizo y me prendo diez. Yao, Alejandro Andrés te baja el estrés. Está esperando que le vuele el River 10 o el Trezo. Distinta, si vuela en la quinta, me juzgan por el rapper por las pintas, pero no importa, men, yo quiero freestylear, quiero sentarme en la feature table y check racear, o trivetear o meter la cuarta. Cuando rapeo y juego poker, men, los mediocres se infartan, yo los parto en porciones como lo hago con la tarta y se vuelven locos, incluso me mandan las cartas y yo estoy acá haciendo una entrevista. La gente en inglés es simple, me pidió mi freestyle y yo le digo, no hables más, men, no me insistas. Solo tengo que sacar mi cel y poner la pista y no es de blue. Soy un rapper old school y todo lo que te cuento es verdad, man. All is true, you know. Suelto bars en Spanglish y cuando agarro el micro los raperos no lo entienden. Billy Eilish in the zone. Motherfucker, give me the microphone. Salgo de mi 
en zonas de confort y ahora men tengo la destreza tengo que cortar el freestyle porque vuelvo a la mesa <risa> It ain't Sinatra, but I like it. I give it an 8.2 out of 10. There were some slip-ups and some words I didn't really like and some stuff that really didn't rhyme. Fold the two pop OMC on the button, starting with 7.9 million. Chip average 5.6 million and a raise to 235. There is Matthew Pauletti. Sorry, for the better hand, he's queen. 30-year-old Rutgers grad, a game integrity specialist. He works to get rid of the cheats. Good on him. Big blind, Sam Elia folds, so heads up, almost identical stacks, Lococo with a 70,000 chip advantage. Come on, we got it. All right, both catch a piece, Paoletti with top pair, Lococo middle pair. Check, check, tray of hearts on the turn. Time to build a pot, 250 from Paoletti. That was a big flop for Paoletti. He's got Lococo nailed here. Lococo, second best hand, but matches the bet. River card. Oh, wow. Another jack for Lococo. That was a stupid card. That This is a stupid game. Paoletti slows down. Yeah. <clears throat> Lococo is not going to check back. One point two million. Oof. That's over pot. Can he ignore it? Nope, he cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Nice You're river good. for Papo. I should have that river. I'm bad, I'm bad. Yeah, I'm bad. I'm back. You're back. You're back and I'm bad. Oh, well. Is Paletti now a rap of Michael Jackson song? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm bad. I'm back. You're back. You're back and I'm bad. Oh well. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Back at the Las Vegas Strip, Lon McCarron with Norman Chat, Kara Scott and Jeff Platt. Day six, starting to hit its stride to an outer table where Roke Gostisha, one of the hottest players on the planet, has pocket kings and has Eddie Sabat all in and in trouble with Ace Jack. Sabat 16th at the 2014 main event. Gostisha, three high roller titles at the Poker Go Tour in 2021. Eddie gets partway there, pairing his Jack. Turn card. Another Jack. Oh, but in the bag for Sabat, and it's Jack's full. No parking on hand with Ace Jack for Eddie. Ace Jack is on fire. I like Eddie, but I don't like the toothpick. And there shouldn't be any fist bumping of other players when we're on day six. There are no friends out there at this point, only enemies. Sabat up to over 2.1 million. Gostisha down to 2 million. Back to the main stage, Stan Lee has been a bit card dead, and he's got jacks, but he's got more trouble. I am or Creef opened with queens, and then Gilbert Cruz three bet with aces. Lee, 35-year-old Las Vegas pro with two World Series circuit rings. Cruz, 29-year-old civil engineer from the Dominican Republic. Or Creef, 43-year-old Israeli-born Miami realtor and poker pro. Lee running short on chips. 18 bigs, but when is he going to see pocket jacks again? Or Kreef on the left, Cruz on the right. Can the Jacks be good here? It's a tough spot. Uh-oh. He's stacking things up. They move as one. He's all in. The Lon McCarran Memorial hand strikes again. Shevsky can fold four deuce. Casey's one thing. <laughs> no. So back around to Orcrief now with Queens. <laughs> Orcrief, five bets, Cruz with the aces, says, oh, okay. Wow, 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 wow. wow. Yeah, shades of aces versus kings versus kings at the main event final table bubble in 2018. So Cruz and Lee at risk, Orcrief has both covered. Yeah. Lee says, so close. Didn't know which way to go. Wish he had folded now. On the left, bystander Sam Elliott folded, but he can't keep his seat. Cruz looking for a triple up. How about ace, queen, jack on the flop? 
Ace Queen Jack, one, one time, one time. One time for the, for the show. One time. Ace Queen Jack on the flop. Danielle, bring it out the flop. No paint. Not much there. Maybe they'll chop it three ways if the board runs out with a straight. <laughs> That'd be fun. Six of hearts? Two of, no. two of clubs. Six, six of hearts. No. Put a nine of heart out two of clubs. Turn card. Ten of hearts. Or Creep holds the only heart in his hand. Or Creep with life now. Wow. Cruz trying to hold on. Lee Damn. needs a four outer. Not the Jack of Hearts, though. <laughs> Lee with the straight draw. Or Creep looking for help. And yes! gets it with the heart. Yes! Let's go! Yes! Yes! A double knockout. Aces lose to Queens. There's an expression for that in Spanish. Oh, what is it? I don't know. I don't speak Spanish. Stan Lee, 86th. Gilbert Cruz out at 85th. Oh, Decent payout for both the eliminated players. A highlight hand playing out here on our main feature table. And what an adrenaline rush for Orcreef. Almost out of here, but now stacking nearly 100 big blinds. Orcreef reaping the rewards of that heart on the river. He's up to almost 9.7 million right now. All right, let's go next door to table B as players begin their break. Effie Litsu, the only woman left in the main event, just four bet the shorter to to stack. Elliot oh, Stern, all in, both with Ace King. You want you can call clock on me? I'm not, me. Gonna, I'm not gonna call the clock. You take your time. Okay, thank you about that. So, you, so you want me to call them? I, I'm just saying, I never called the clock. Oh. It's a big decision. Two amateurs, big moment, day six. Stern, CEO of a marketing agency from Montclair, New Jersey. Litsu, banking executive from Larchmont, New York. Litsu, the original razor. Stern in the cutoff, then return the favor. Oh, I don't like how you wanted me to take my time. Oh, did I run into pocket kings or aces? That would be disastrous, huh? And I'm holding ace king. I wish I wasn't on a uh, featured table. Now everyone can see what bad decisions I'm gonna make. I won't look. It's not a bad decision, you have a good hand. If you double up, you have a pretty good stack. I would have a beautiful stack. What did you start the hand with? What did I start the hand with? Uh, 12 million? 12 million? 12, 13, something like that. You wouldn't do that with Ace Queen. That, that wouldn't be very nice. It's not a very friendly thing to do. 26 blinds if he folds. A top poker pro would oh talk boy. about stack preservation now. So, Lon, I'll handle this. Uh, please don't. I almost called a minute ago. Now I'm thinking about folding. Mm, he folds. Effie. Show one time? I even see it on TV. See it on TV? It was a good hand. It was the same hand he had, you con artist. It was not Ace Queen. It was not Ace Queen. A no. coin flip? I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that with Ace Queen. Yeah, probably a coin flip, I would think, right? I don't run good, so I, I muck the hand. No Ace or King. Anyway, I've got 60 minutes, so that's good. Litsu's aggression and monster stack earns the fold. Seating is completely random, but sometimes it doesn't look that way out in the field. Karai Aldemir's table broke and he drew a spot here at the feature table. You know what's completely random? When I met my second wife at a Jiffy Loop, I could have gone to a Meineke. Main event champs have had some wonderful history through the years. Stu Unger won it three times, Doyle twice, Chan twice, plus a runner-up. We group Brunson and Harrington in small fields there, but Doyle was in fields of 22 and 34. Action Dan was third and fourth in fields of 839 and 2576. And this late in the main event, still two past champs alive. When we left Matthew Shepsky, pocket queens earned him a double up to 1.7 million. He's got 2.1 now and queens again. There's a raise to 245. This time Shevsky with 17 bigs in a stack. Folded to Paletti. Paletti with sevens on the button. 
Paletti was a game integrity specialist at Poker Stars a few years back. And he is going to make the call. Sam Elia, card dead over two. Orcrief, ace king of spades. Another big what hand for Orcrief. His wife is on the rail. His dog is on the rail. What else does a man need? <laughs> Taking the posture of a player with a big hand. Well, his queens just cracked aces. Now it looks like his ace king is going to run into queens. Or Kreef with the biggest stack of these three. three and there is a three bet to 875. 875. Back to Shepsky. Can he do it again? Come on, man. He's going to try. 2.2. Paletti folds. Or Kreef calls. Or Kreef plays from oh. behind again with a big hand. Shepsky at risk for all his chips. So another huge moment for Shepsky. Trying to get his kids to Vegas in the final table. Or Kreef trying to keep his meteoric rise alive. Here's the flop. And three oh. queens for Shepsky. Shapsky with a hammer lock on this one now. Four of clubs. No entertainment. <laughs> or Kreef can't believe his luck. Turn card. Another ace, a boat for Shepsky, but Or Kreef adds some outs. Ace, king, or nine king. King. would send the hammer lock home. River card. Or Creep comes up empty with his three aces. I know, they think it's a full house. I got you, bud. A much more meaningful double up this time for Matthew Shepsky. It's skill that got them here. Hard work that made them persevere. But on day six, of the main event with under 100 players left in the room, a little luck goes a long way. The World Series of Poker main event continues right now. The sun has set on the Las Vegas Strip, but the heat is rising inside Bally's Event Center where day six continues at the main event. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad. The floor is sparse with tables. Only nine of them remain to seat our final 78 survivors, one of whom is unlucky enough to hold pocket jacks with all his chips at risk. The glasses and beard in seat five. Terrence Reed needs to overcome the pocket kings of Kareem Rebay. How good does Rebay run? Is Pierre Dualmeda going to give Terrence Reed his bust out video on the way out? Three kings for Rebay. Turn card ends it. Reed now drawing dead and eliminated. The kings love it. A 31 year old Sioux Falls pro, not sure where to go. I think South Dakota is northeast of here. South Dakota has been known as the Sunshine State, the Blizzard State, the Mount Rushmore State, now the state of the 78th place finisher here in the main event. All right, so let's take a look at some notable stacks brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. We are all Caesars. Lots of experience left in the room. Last year's seventh place finisher, Papo MC, sitting on 14 million. Two most recent champs, Karai Aldemir, Damian Salas, are short. Salas is short, I'll grant you that, but I'll have you know Karai Aldemir is five foot 10, which is above average. Also on that list was Effie Litsu with over 14 million chips. It's been quite the journey for the last woman in the field to be here at the main event. <laughs> I lived in like an hour north of Athens in a seaside town. I was there until I was 18. You know, life is good, easy. Uh, but then I moved to London to study. I spent a fair amount of years there. And then I found my way to, uh, to the States. I hadn't played, played poker for quite some time because of the pandemic and having a small one. Uh, so I started playing this year a bit, maybe like one one Sunday a month, and I played the qualifier, and I qualified, uh, and I'm here. 
She's the executive director of an investment bank in her first main event. Litsu in the big blind, action folded to the small blind. Tom Kunza, Jack 8 of Diamonds, poker pro raised in Germany, now lives in Tax Relief, Austria. He limped in. Litsu with the pocket sixes, raises to 345. Yeah, no limping on my watch, she says. Kunza with a business degree from the University of Leipzig. Uh, I believe they are the Horned Frogs. He will come along for 225 more. If he crushed it on day five to move into second place to begin this day six. Here's the flop. 795. Kunza with a double gutter. He checks. Effie bets half pot. No slowdown from Litsu. Litsu grew up in Greece. Kunza grew up in Germany. Greece does not border Germany, so they do not know each other. Effie with a gut shot of her own. Kunza began the hand with six million, makes the call here with his draw. Turn card. Bingo for Effie, hits the nine high straight. Kunza with a pair of eights and drawing to a higher straight. Check. He checks again. Her sixes were best, and now her straight is bester. Bester? Yeah, bester. Better than best. Where'd you go to school, UCSB? I believe they are the Gauchos. Yeah, sure, nice try. 400,000 from Litsu is met by Kunza. River King, Effie dodges trouble after that cheap turn bet. Check. Kunza checks again. She checked back? Wow. I, I don't really get that. A little safe check back, and she will take the pot, though. And Elliot Stern is looking at that showdown like I used to look at my physics homework. Oh, yeah. Every action a poker player makes can be debated late into the night, but no debating. Up. Effie Litsu has a monster Jackie. stack. Nice turn card for you. Epi stacking the winnings. Tournament summary brought to you by Zenny. I wear for everyone. The last two main event champs still in the game. But the one-man poker spectacle, Zilong Zhang, flamed out quietly to begin this day six. Another entertaining player right there, Papo MC, the Argentinian rapper and YouTuber. His hobby is food? Everybody's hobby is food. You don't eat, you don't live. Strong stack of 13 and a half million, twice the chip average. Papa with pocket nines raises the 250 oh. and with Queens, Pauletti shoves. 19 bigs into the middle. Stone kid. Pauletti's got a history degree from Rutgers. That's like having an English degree from Pet Boys. What do you got against Rutgers? They shouldn't be in the Big Ten. And Maryland shouldn't be in the Big Ten. We're not talking about Maryland, gaucho boy. Any takers for the shove, the small shove from the Queens and Pauletti. Ogle folds. Tran the big blind. The ball rat or your. There you go. <laughs> Take him down. Tony, please. Get an account. Two point it's three twenty. Two point. Two point. Aletti's had some hard luck against Alejandro at this table, but his queens are smiling now. Oh, there is the call. Pauletti hitches his pants and gets ready for the oh. battle rapper. The queen is both. You saw the cards that both? The queen? <laughs> no, right I don't there. think he was worried about that. Oh. I mean, you might not, uh, even, that's okay. you might not even play the hand. You should have fought him. Queen of spades <laughs> exposed during the deal, so it's going to be the nope. burn yeah. card. <laughs> not in a million years. Oh, Pauletti in good shape still. Two clean streets from five million chips. Howletti still good after the if flop. If he hit the nine here, he only had one out. That's a problem. No way. Huh? Lococo seems more on edge than anyone. No. Third card. Oh, a nine. I only have one out. That's okay. No, you stay at one out. No, it's it's fine. Well, Rad, you 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 you, you can breathe now. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You only have one out. No, yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Hey, Matthew, the stats say 100% of selfies taken during an all-in result in yourself being eliminated. Good luck, bud. Yeah, I'm smoking. Ben! Oh, I'm my king God! on the river, oh, and yeah. the Good night game. is over for Matthew Good Pelletti. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. I'm playing with you guys. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, hey, it's a game. Play I've, I've played good. tens of thousands in the tournaments of my life. It's just another one. He says <sighs> it's just another tournament, but Matthew, it's the main yeah. event.
back at Bally's in Paris, Las Vegas, where we will check in on some familiar faces at this year's World Series of Poker main event. Out in the field since 2020, champ Damian Salas with 25 big blinds. In 2020, there was no opponent Damian couldn't beat, but this year he's met his match, a backpack. <laughs> And there's Will Nunley, former featured table staple, now gracing the outers. Same t-shirt, same neck gator. And if this guy makes the final table, expect the neck gator craze to sweep the nation. Our new chip leader, Kamal Bittar, with nearly 22 million. The way chip leaders have fared this year, I do not like his chances. No offense, Kamal. Back to feature table C, Frank Fennaro standing next to the dealer at risk, but has Pierre Almeida in the white t-shirt dominated yeah, ace king all in against ace queen. Fennaro, two and three quarter million, trying to double that right now. Top pair for Du Almeida, but a Broadway draw for Fennaro. Du Almeida, 32-year-old French pro. Fennaro, 27-year-old New Jersey pro. And there's a new top pair in town. Fennaro takes back the lead. And Fennaro now just has to fade a queen to stick around. The river card. A harmless five. Hurricane. Easy double up, right? <laughs> And Fonaro, who has a little Ray Romano in him, doesn't have to stand up any longer. He's about two million below average. Uh, I felt okay. That was my first time all in. But there are Ooh. over 8,500 main event entrants oh, without cold. chips right now. Taking a look at the chips brought to you by Stormex, the easiest way to earn crypto. Everyone looking to stack up those beautiful chocolate 500K chips. There's Brian Kim, schooled at UNLV, lives in Australia, talked to us about his passion off the felt and on the ice. I play in a semi-professional ice hockey league in Australia right now. Uh, it's a travel team called the Sydney Bears and it's full contact, which is insane and scary because some of those dudes are huge. And I'm in there and it's so much fun. It's almost just as fun as this, to be honest. So there's actually a lot of correlation between poker and hockey. In hockey, you have to adjust to how your opponents are playing all the time. Another thing is that you can't let the emotions get the best of you. Although sometimes I disagree with that. In hockey, when I'm really angry, I play better. But in poker, that just isn't going to work. Another thing poker and hockey have in common, David yeah, Tuckman knows nothing about I mean, either game. <laughs> nice you bird. Him enough. Huh? You needed him enough. Who? Oh, you. Neither who? Oh. Him. What did I yell him about? He has no idea what he's saying. He's no, he, you know, he knows. I if, know. the, if the night come, he only have one now, so he should take and see that. See, he should, might be a shit. Ryan with ace two's hearts, a raise the two sixty. Still a needle. It's not a needle. Come on. You been playing for how long, Kenny? Kenny Tran engages in what we call creative nonviolence with his table talk. He like you know. Fold the to the champ. Help, you need more out. You know, you. Aldemir trying to stay champ. Big blind. Not nice. Not nice. Not nice? Not nice. Why not? Get two out there. Huh? Get two out there. That's nice for me. Huh? I, I hate to question the champ, but I don't think he has enough chips to fool around with 7 6 <laughs> off. He's down to 25 bigs. He will defend. Kim flops top pair. Aldemir open ended and checks. All the big guns are falling and the little chopsticks still here. You're doing That's great. fair. You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Doing good. This is a squid game, man. You <laughs> only need to survive. You're fine. You're fine. Believe it or not, David Tuckman and Brian Kim once played in the same adult hockey league in Southern California. Tuck says Kim was very fast. Then again, everybody's going to look fast relative to Tuck. For a hockey player, he doesn't check much. Kim bets 200,000. There is the call. So we sell noodles for a living. So you, it's a good living. I mean, are you a chef? Jack is no help to Karai. He checks again. Kim used to sneak into San Diego card rooms underage. He had a fake ID with the name Albert. I think Kenny Tran would have nailed him on that. Kim checks back now. River card. Another ace trips for Brian Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Aldemir whiffs on his straight draw, but he's looking at his chip stack. He, he might be thinking of some uh, evil here. You're right, Norman. He's going to give this a try. The champ bluffs at it, perhaps trying to get a big pocket pair to fold. That's your free food voucher. 
you eat as much as you want. Thank you. You come to England. Oh, you know. Don't do not offer this guy that. No, 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 he no. Say, no. Eat as much as you want. Eat as much as you want. This man shows respect, man. Yeah. Honestly, he's respectful. Kim makes the call, and Aldemir stack is suddenly lacking. Winning the champs' chips is something to be cherished. Ah, sometimes you're the champ. Sometimes you're the chump. Karai suddenly starting to feel this is not 2021 anymore. Brian Kim over 14.2 million now. Karai Aldemir backsliding uncharacteristically at the main event to win this one is going to take all of his poker powers. Deep runs at the main event are a once-in-a-lifetime experience for most players who are thrilled and excited just to still have chips at this point. Oh, every, every morning I wake up, I, I tell myself, ah, oh, this is probably the day I'm going to bust out. Really? Tournament. And then you don't? And then I don't. That's actually really worth jinxing or something like that. I don't know. I'm usually like, oh, today we're just going to be fine, and it's always fine. I haven't, <laughs> even, I haven't even been running good this tournament. The, my, my, my flight leaves tomorrow morning. Oh. Oh, really? Tom Kunza under the gun. Pocket fours. On his main event seat at an online saddie, looks around and sees just two stacks that are not bigger than his. He raises to 240. Tom, let's make another bet. No. Let's make another bet. You can make a bet on the table. <laughs> Victor Lee having fun with Kunza. 240? 240. Yes. Lee, Canadian investor slash Seven, venture capitalist slash do-gooder. Living his dream playing in the main event. And with Ace King, a three bet to 720. No other takers? Jack Ten of Hearts? Worthwhile? Nope. Jacob Meeks folds. And there, hey! 2018 final table is Antoine Labat. Ninth place that year. This is his third main event cash. I have like 4.8 to 5, something in that range. Too much. This is why I want to make another bet. It's more fun when the ranges are like really whack. <laughs> is it 10-4 or is it aces? I have a problem with both these guys. Kunza has watched every episode of the Japanese animated series One Piece at least twice. There are more than a thousand episodes. Lee at Queen's University in Ontario was on the Varsity Ultimate Frisbee team. Both of those actions are unacceptable. <laughs> Kunza made the call with the best hand. Flop. There's an eight, a deuce, and a tray. Pocket fours coming through the fire against Ace King so far. Check by Kunza. Check back by Lee. No C bet from Lee. Five of clubs. Kunza now with an open-ended straight draw to go with his leading pocket fours. On breaks, Kunza lies on his back and allows friends of his to play checkers on his hoodie. <laughs> Worth a wager there. 625,000 with the best hand. How much are you playing? I played 4.8 to start the hand. Lee picked up a gut shot to a wheel. Otherwise, that board just feels like all Kunza. One point four. Lee feels otherwise. He's waking up to test Kunza. A noticeable gulp from Kunza. A bluff raise from the do-gooder. That's dirty pool. Yeah, you know, I can see watching every episode of The Simpsons twice, but One Piece, come on! I don't think you could do that in one lifetime, though. Yeah, that show's been on since... Forever. Yeah. Not going away. Kunza with the call. Lee not pleased. Kunza recovers from the shock of that bluff raise to make the call. River card. Nine of clubs, a third club out there, but Victor Lee whiffs that board. Another check from Kunza. I'm all in. Wow. As usual, Lon, I did not see that coming. <laughs> Lee puts Kunza all in. Tens or jacks? No? Maybe I'm way off. The weird flop check, man. Yeah, the flop check from Lee has beflummoxed Kunza. Better? 
call with Queens Freefall? This is very weird, my friends. You know how I play. Would Lee check back and overpair on the flop? Very unlikely. Still, this is an impossible call for your main event life with a pair of fours. Kunza Pretty does ball. make the call Force. with the lowly pocket fours. Oh my God. What a call. Nice. nice call, Tom. <sighs> that, is, that is sick. I think this is like the most insane head I've ever played in my life. An amazing call from Kunza. Great call, Tom. Nice hand, man. Nice hand is an understatement. Remind me not to try to bluff you. <laughs> That's probably a bet. Maybe I've got to start Good watching to do, this man. one piece. <laughs> oh, I'm shaking, man. My what? new favorite player, Tom <laughs> Konza. Well player. done. All right, a look at the payouts, past, present, and future. Brought to you by Stormex, the easiest way to earn crypto. Had Kunza been wrong, he's walking with over 100K. Each time we lose a table today, there's a pay jump. Back to center stage, Brian Kemp, middle position with ace queen. From a stack of 14 million, a raise to 260. Kim, a former online guy, a high stakes cash game player now. Kenny Tran on the button. Folded to Aldemir, just 14 big blinds with pocket nines. Pocket nines, short stack. Plus, Aldemir has won 77 of his last 78 flips. <laughs> it's Heidi Ho time. Heidi Ho. Big blind. Shevsky. King nine off. Nope. Call. And then a quick call from Kim with the ace queen. It's only 10% of his stacks. He will try to buck the odds and out duel Karai Aldemir. Nice and hot. True. When they're up against queens, for sure. Huh? I said when they're up against queens, they're yeah. hot. The ace is dangerous, <laughs> you think? I don't know. Oh. Who should have a side So bet? Karai we'll Aldemir right. at risk, and Kim wastes no time flopping the queen. So maybe the punk's luck has run out. Seven of diamond on the turn. Aldemir <laughs> outlasted 6,600 players talking. last year. He He's outlasted nearly 8,600 this year, but he needs a lot of help now. And the six on the turn doesn't do it. Oh. Upside down, 60 minutes and nine. Aldemir needs a nine and a nine only, flat. or his remarkable two-year run Four is spot, over. Flat. The river card, the eight of hearts. Brian Kim right. scores yeah. the yeah. biggest knockout of his out. poker career. The elimination of the defending champion, Karai Aldemir. And if he hadn't won last year, 75th would sound pretty darn good. He had a pretty darn good summer in the running for player of the year, but out for 101,000, the defending champion, Karai Aldemir. Oh my God. Hey, he won this last year, right? Yeah. Huh? He won it last year. I didn't know that. He so. won the tournament last year? This one. Uh, that was him. Oh, I don't watch him. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know? Kenny is full, he's full. You're full of bluffs, huh? Kenny Tran could bluff himself. As Brian Kim stacks up the remains of Karai Aldemir's chips, Kara Scott is now with the once and former champ. Our reigning champion is out of the field. You got a round of applause as well while you left. You've been such a great ambassador for the game. I know we talk about that a lot in poker. What has it been like for you this year, having been the reigning champion in this experience? Uh, yeah, it was very special. I mean, very different to what I was used to the years before. Uh, a lot of people came up to me, uh, spoke to me. That was a pretty cool experience, yeah. Now, I know it's never fun to bust out of the main event. It's been a very long time since that's happened to you because you won the last one. Can you tell me, besides luck, what do these players that are still in, what do they need to get down to that final table right now? Um, they have to play their, their, their best game, um, try to sleep well at night and, and, and so on. That's always important. And, um, of course, making good decisions. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us. Of course. Thank you. Graceful, eloquent, classy, talented. That's a true champion, and we can't wait to see him back in the hunt next year.
the best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. How many times were you at risk last year? Once. One day Only two. once? Holy shit. Where'd you end up? Uh, I won last year. <laughs> oh, did you really? <laughs> Where'd you end I thought he was trolling you. Karai Aldemir, such an unassuming low-key champion that many didn't even know who he was. He spoke softly but carried a big stack and he proved he was no fluke. Here's a look at the defending champs cashing the next year during the Moneymaker era. Raymer and Eastgate scoring top 100 finishes. Raymer's first and 25th, a great achievement against a combined 8,000 entrants. Aldemir's first and 75th against a combined oh. 15,000 entrants. Yeah. You know, this is the best end I saw like for the last three hours, you know, a part of 7-3 and 7-1 and then. Our dead Sam Elliott with ace deuce all in for 700,000. Elliot, 56 year old CEO of Chopsticks, an Asian fast food chain in the UK. Ace Queen for the King Slayer, Brian Kim. Going for another knockout. Oh, oh Sam. That's uh, a really uh, bad flop. Kenny's right. That's yeah. as bad as it can be. It's a good, it's it can't be speed. worse than that. He's been doing this all day. Like needling people when they're all in. At like Couldn't be worse. And then he's yeah, like, yeah, what are you yeah. talking about? Nice That's the ball idea. game, Sam draws down. It was dead. amazing. Guys, he entertained me like four, you know, four, five, Hard six hours. I lost. Oh, yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah. You yeah. just came here, but you know, it's a hey. nice table here. Hey. Yeah. I'll still, I'll still yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Great run by Elia. Kogel yeah. still bothered by safe, Trans right? Table yeah. Talk. And Brian Kim, I've got to tell you, Lon, just has a second or third place feel to me. He's going deep. Great day six for him, up to 17 million. 73 now remain, average stack 7.1 million. 20K pay bump coming with two more eliminations. At an outer table, the big stack Kamal Bitar, screen right, stewing with pocket trays. Former triple leader James Hobbs just shoved 4.3 million on the river with jacks full. Chip leader and a former chip leader, both in their first main event. Batar, 35-year-old Baccarat professional from Paraguay with a law degree. Thinking about making a hero call here, like we saw Tom Kunza make with pocket fours. There is the call, but this will not turn out well for Batar. Hobbs with the boat and the double up. Hobbs takes it all in stride. He has just one recorded live cash for $304. Top dog to start the day. His stack lost and shine, but now doubling to give him almost $12 million again. Hobbs from St. Louis decided to make this trip in honor of his mother, who used to play with him and passed away last year. Elsewhere, there's one of several players with a second straight deep run, Matia Dobrich. Finished 32nd last year. He just knocked out Rahul Rastogi in 72nd place, meaning everyone else in the field gets a raise. Minimum payout, 121K now. Lon, I had targeted Rastogi for 72nd when we had more than 900 players left. Show me that betting ticket. Nearby, all in pre flop for his last million. Igor Ioffe with ace eight up against Philippe Suki with 13.7 million chips and Queen Jack. Suki grabs the lead with a pair of jacks. Suki, 33 year old British pro. Ioffe, 43 year old Cleveland pro. Two pair for Suki now, but a minor river sweat. Ioffe with a gut shot. The river four ends the hand, the massage, and the main event for Ioffe, his fourth and biggest main event cash. And that's how you knock a guy out. No needles, no speech. Just stack your chips and try not to get hit in the head by the reporter behind you. Almost 15 million for Suki now. He had a main event min cash last year, but making great strides so far in the 2022 version for the Brit. On. Oh, stone kid. You saw the car set boss, the queen? <laughs> no. Right there. Oh, oh. Sam. That's a really bad flop. That's how bad yeah. it can be. He's been doing this all day. Like needling people when they're all in. It's not a needle. Come on. You've been playing for how long, Kenny? What's happened? 
talking of Kenny Tran, one of our 70 remaining players, but his table talk has not entertained his neighbor, Nathaniel Kogel. I feel like there's a common ground between being um, sympathetic to people when they're all in or being obviously like misconstruing how you're being funny to people. I don't think anything people. with that. I mean, for example, like I used to, like a three-way all-in, I like to see the knight heart on the turn, give a guy a of chance. Of course, or that, that, yeah, 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 yeah. But you, you, you're telling a guy, oh, did you not see the queen? Why would, why would you go all-in? If it's you obviously, would, I mean, he obviously he had to go all-in. You have to be a moron <laughs> to not know that the joke. Okay, you're just trolling the whole time. Is basically what oh you're saying. Oh my God. You're, you're I joking the whole time. I, I can't believe I, I'm listening to this. If these guys lived next to each other, there'd be a lot of issues. Good fences make good table mates. At an outer table, checking in on poker's good guy, Eddie Sabat, with just 11 bigs right now. Fun fact, a toothpick in the mouth is worth 8% more fold equity when you bluff shove. I don't believe that. Kareem Rebay still with a big stack, but not a lot of talking right now. Fun fact, a floral print jacket earns 9% more calls when you bluff shove. That I believe. Under the gun, Aaron Duzak, ace-queen. But he folds. 240. Pocket tense. Eight. Victor Lee's going to raise it up. Well, Aaron Duzak folded ace queen under the gun. He did. Either I've taught him that ace queen always loses, or more likely he's a huge nit who's going to try and fold every hand <laughs> into the final table. You cannot fold your way to the final table. Not on my watch, you huckle doodle. Not from the button, Tom. I have to be in position. <laughs> I have to be in position. Uh, my hero, Kunza, on the button. 9 8 of hearts. Makes the call. Effie Litsu in the small blind with pocket sevens comes along. Her buddy Stern in the big blind. Well, we've got three decent looking hands plus Nick Rigby's dirty diaper. <laughs> That's right, Trey Deuce. It is awful. <laughs> <laughs> He'll sit this one it out, has though. It really bad for me to fold this hand. <laughs> Nick Rigby just died inside a little. <laughs> All right, three to the flop. Sevens, tens, and nine, eights suited. Let's see with the hammer stack. Go to the flop. And none of the three hate that flop. Yeah, but up and down straight draw for the dirty diaper. Stern folded it. True story. I used to play in a game in which a guy re-entered pots after the flop. I kid you not. More than once you went to that game? <laughs> yeah, I stopped going to the game. <laughs> Litsu checked. Lee, all undercards to his leading pocket pair, does bet 375. Now Kunza with top pair on the board. Adds 375 to the pot. Effie. Wow. We got a check raise coming, Norman? We do indeed. She makes it 1.1 million. Best hand bets, second best hand calls, worst hand raises. It's poker. One of these things is not like the other. This is Lee's first main event, like Litsu. This is his fourth cash at this World Series. 2.4. And he roars back at her with a three bet. That gets Kunza out of the hand. Well, Litsu went with the squeeze play, thinking Lee was just messing around. He's now telling her, I am not messing around. All in. Wow, a four bet to put Lee all in. My goodness. Litsu plays big stack power poker, telling Lee, you've got to play for all your chips. And if he folds here, he's still got 25 bigs. Two recreational players recreating their high finance day jobs right here at the main event. I don't know if she thinks she's ahead of a club draw or over cards, or if she's trying to bluff them off a bigger pair. He makes the call under the greatest pressure and is two streets from 12 million or bust. Well, Kunza made a big call for all his chips against Lee. Lee now does the same against Litsu, but there are two cards to come. What a hand this has turned into. Really scared of 9-5. <laughs> or actually, no, she called into the small blind. Oh, she probably doesn't have 9-5. Or like a set. I had one of the nines. You had one of the nines? She could have a set of fives, fours. <clears throat> it's the best case outcome. Make it like a 
produce some diamonds. <laughs> That's too vanilla, man. Too vanilla. <laughs> I want vanilla. Please. Lee trying to hang on. Six, eight, Tray of hearts and a few more oh outs no. for Litsu. Oh, that gives her out more outs. Yeah, that's more strawberry than vanilla. Oh God. Litsu can now make oh. a straight with a six or a seven also will knock out Victor Lee. Hey, uh, the river card, a jack. Nice hand, dude. Thank you. Nice Victor Lee with a monster double up through <laughs> Effie Litsu. And that feels good after the failed bluff against Kunza. Oh, okay, okay. And the page two headline, nice fold with ace queen by Aaron Duzak. So a double up in two parts. First, Victor Lee had to make the right call. Then he had to fade the run out. Nice hand, Victor. You are back in business. Back at Bally's Event Center for continuing coverage of the World Series of Poker as day six inches towards day seven. The pay jumps are getting bigger and bigger. Eddie Sabat and his small stack have moved to our feature table seat. He spoke to us about his passion for another game that many poker players enjoy. So I fell in love with golf a couple years ago. I was a baseball player growing up and it felt good to compete at something. I'm awful at golf but uh, I got better over two years, and now I'm like a 13 handicap. Daniel Negrabi, he's, he's one of my best friends. He's actually the better golfer. He's a great putter. I am awful at putting. Uh, so I would say, yeah, he'll, he'll shoot like low 80s on average. When I really started getting better at golf, he has a golf simulation in his house. So I, I would come over and just hit balls for 10 hours straight until my arms hurt. <laughs> You know what else Daniel Negrano has in his house? Well, I certainly don't. He doesn't invite me nines, over. Is that right? Eddie with two nines. Sounds like my golf game. All in, yes, looking sorry, to fend off bad. Andrew that's Taylor that's and his king eight of spades. Here's the flop. At a set of nines for Eddie and not a spade on board. I'm with you on this one. Sabat has 60 plus World Series caches. Taylor needs runner, 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 and that does not do it. Eddie Sabat with a double up. <laughs> the 35-year-old British pro doubling up Sabat. Over, we'll get bored the other way. Eddie now with 3.2 million. Oh, that's a three-shot birdie fist bump. His next all-in is a par five fist bump. Moving to center stage again, folded to the blinds. Matthew Shepsky still grinding 2.7 million. Pocket sevens in the small blind. 39-year-old Illinois pro sitting on 17 bigs. He calls for 50,000 more. The blind's at 100K, 150K. Lococo on the big blind, the big stack, ace deuce. And Lococo eyeing Shepsky's stack. Does he have an ace deuce battle rap? And a raise to put Shepsky all in, and he makes the call with a pocket pair. Oh, how about? I held my sevens versus ace deuce. I held my equity. Seven. Ace. The equity is not a <laughs> battle rap word. <laughs> Pretty small portion of Lococo's stack to put Shepsky at risk. And here we go. Bottom pair for Lococo, but still behind. Shepsky looks like he's about to get bad news. No, it's great news. A set of sevens ends all doubt. Collect the double up. Wasn't expecting that. Neither was I. I had a bunch of pre-river analysis uh, I was going to impart. There's a lot of stuff I was going to say, Lon. Yeah, put it in a message in a bottle, sir. Good for you. Flesh wound for Lococo. Eddie Sabat flopped a set and doubled up. Matthew Shepsky turned a set to double up. Note to self, hit more sets. 63 players still in the game. Just seven tables left in the Valley's Event Center. 8,600 players have said their goodbyes to the 2022 main event. Everyone else pointing towards the final table in that $10 million first place prize. Right to the main feature table, a quiet Kenny Tran on the button with Kings. He sees opportunity after Jerry Morrell min raised to 300,000. He holds ace eight of hearts. Tran pretty much just shows up at the World Series to play the main event. But the rest of the year, he is fleecing some poor souls at cash games. A three bet to a million two from Kenny. He started with about half the stack of Morels. Nunley folds. 
Krzyzewski with a suited ace jack. Big holding in the big blind, but it has been three bet. Matthew. I'll try it again. No. Gets the message and steps aside. Back to Morrell now. 34-year-old poker pro from Castle Rock, Colorado. You say Castle Rock, I say entertainment. He grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska. Wow, that's exciting. You say Fairbanks, I say cold. <laughs> all in. It's all in. Morales is all in for betting Tran, who is happy to get all his chips in the middle. Tran's 31 bigs, now all in. We see the hearts against Kings. Kenny being mum right now. Well, it's 4.6 million and his main event life at risk right now, but he's in good shape. Six, seven, five of hearts. Yeah, why not? Interesting. Yeah, sweat all it out. of them? For the show. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just oh, five, course. six, seven all hearts for the show. For TV. For the TV. Tran getting yeah. a taste of his own medicine. Oops. Six, five, seven. <laughs> yeah, of course. Two hearts. Six, you know it's six, five, seven, two hearts? Oh, wow. Because yeah, that's green. Up that's on Kenny. really green. All right, here it goes, Kenny. He's the risk. An ace just, and oh, a oh, set oh, of oh. kings for Kenny Tran. You know what? With an ace on the card. For the show. <laughs> for the show? For the show, Sal. Do it. I would love that. I love that. No, but I want an ace on the Ace of diamond on the card. You cannot quiet Kenny yeah. for long. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Turn card sorry, ends no, the okay, matter, sorry, securing the double up. No show. The dangerous sorry, Kenny uh, Tran. Can I can do it. Oh, oh, sorry. He was saying in every single Yeah, I know. Yeah. 4-2. Four, 4-6. Four, 50. 9.7 million for Tran. Good, okay. Letting the needles no roll sweat, off his back. Hmm? No sweat. No sweat. What's no, I mean. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what's, what's there we already to tell him what a bad flop it was. Nothing's going to change. Okay. It was sweat, right? No, I'm, I'm so sorry. Old school poker fans remember Tran as sick call Kenny with a history of brave hero calls. But perhaps he's mellowed with age with his family of a wife and three kids. Tran's game has not mellowed. This is his sixth main event cash since 05. And that includes three top 100 finishes. I'll keep it here at the main feature table. Folded to Morel no, 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 on the no, no, button. No, no, no. King nine of diamonds. And he says, good time to let it fly. Morrell in for 14 bigs. I am or grief with pocket jacks. 43-year-old Israeli born Miami pro. He calls. That takes less than a third of his stack. Brian Kem now almost 17 million with Ace King. Yeah, the biggest stack at the table. And he has the biggest hand you can have that's not a pair. Wise. Morrell, all in. Boy, Kim just looks like a final table guy to me. And he is re raising Whoa. to put Orcreef all in. Yeah, that's going to put Orcreef into the blender on setting number four. They don't call it the Lon McCare Memorial hand for nothing. What a decision for Orcreef. Does he want to pen his main event hopes on this hand? No, he gets out of the way. He is my hero folding the jacks. So Morrell at risk and in trouble. Or Kreef was beside himself yeah. after he saw the cards tabled. You have, you have ace queen? Jacks. Ace jack? Jacks. See, I thought this can't go. The jacks will watch from the sideline as Kim will try to take oh. out Morrell. Maybe a triple. <laughs> <laughs> Ten jack eight. Oh, oh, bad fold for the jacks. Rainbow. Or grief beside himself again. Ace king, meanwhile, and king nine with straight draws. Not even a good flop for me. I guess nine. Turn card. Queen of spades, and Brian Kim scores the higher straight. Morrell can only hope to chop. What good fold with the pocket jacks. <laughs> Morrell will need a river ace to chop it and stick around. The river card is a queen, no chop. And Kim takes it all. And by the way, bad fold for the pocket jacks. Morrell out in 63rd place. Moral of the storyline when you've got pocket jacks. Muck them and leave the room. <laughs> Jerry cashes for 121500 
And everything On going day on. six of the main event, tensions are high. Words are exchanged. You have to be a moron to not know that's a joke. Tempers are tested. Whoa! While hugs abound and fist bumps are flying, ultimately, there are no friends at the poker table. He's been doing this all day, like needling people when they're all in. Because in this tournament, the World Series of Poker main event, there can be only one winner. With the biggest poker tournament on planet Earth in its twilight hours, the main event final table is coming more into focus. Hi, everybody. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad. Just 59 players remain. 58 of them are chasing that man, Matija Dobric, a smart and aggressive Croatian seeking to make his second day seven in eight months. This guy makes me think I should grow a beard and move to Eastern Europe. All right, over at our main feature table, which has been dominated by some testy table talk between Kenny Tran and Nathaniel Kogel, it also houses the second biggest stack in the room, Brian Kim, resident of Sydney, Australia. Kim is cool, calm, and collected, more nonchalant than chalant. And we've also got a bracelet winner there, old school pro Kenny Tran, who used to be called Sick Call Kenny. Tran is also cool, calm, and collected, more nonchalant than chalant. No. C1, Papa Wim C, seventh place last year. Look, Coco is cool, but hey, man, that was very chalant. Spilling your chips all over the place? Come on, Alejandro. It's Act mine. like you've been there before. Chip counts brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. We are all Caesars. Dobrich and Kim with monster stacks. Lococo and Tran with healthy stacks. And Damian Salas trying to repeat his 2020 win has some work to do with a million three quarter. Chip values are brought to you by Stormex, the easiest way to earn crypto with the blinds at 100,000, 150K. Those green chips will not be around for very long. In the blue shirt under the gun, Nathaniel Kogel, Texas pro with three circuit rings, raised it up to 400,000, folded around to the big blind. Kim, with a big stack, will make the call. Kim plays semi-pro ice hockey for the Sydney Bears. He's got twice the stack as Kogel. There's the flop. And Kim outflops Kogel with a pair of fives. Kogel opened with Queen Jack off suit. That is not Norman Chad School of Poker approved. And now he's going to continue probably down the deep, dark path of seabed destruction. A check to the under the gun razor, and there's half pot. Kim acting under the watchful eye of Kogel. You'll be staring at him for a while, Nathaniel. Kim is not going to get out of this hand. Wow, that was a no looky 525 call. Turn card, deuce of diamonds. Kim still good and adds a flush draw. Kim keeps staring at Kogel. Yes, he called you, and yes, he's the big stack at the table. Another check. Kim, 32 year old pro, sometimes seen on Hustler Casino Live. Kogel, 33 year old Austin pro, sometimes seen at Doug Polk's Lodge Club there. As an eight to one underdog, Kogel fires a million three hundred eighty thousand. Kogel, who did apply for admission to the Norman Chad School of Poker, but was rejected. Now decides to try to bluff the big stack. The big stack is unbluffable in this spot. Wow, a monster raise! I think Kogel just threw up a little bit in his mouth. <laughs> the Ice Man check raiseth. Nathaniel, are you going to pick up a tell there before folding? Come on. Yeah, he's got a fold. <laughs> and Kogel can take heart knowing his chips just made Brian Kim the main event chip leader. Tell you, Kim just looks like he's going places. And when I say places, Lon, I mean the final table. Indeed, he's got the looks, he's got the chips. Current payout, almost 146 grand. Thanks to Stormex, we'll be down to six tables soon, and that means a 30K pay raise for those still with chips. Over to our secondary featured table, we've got Canadian resident Vadim Rosen. This gentleman has an analytical background, and he talked to us about how that improves his play on the felt. I'm an engineer, uh, full-time, so I'm doing design for mobile processors. As a person, I have strong analytical skill, and it's also connected to the fact that I'm an engineer, so I'm analyzing things a lot, and that's 
helping me a great deal of uh, in poker of uh, analyzing hands, uh, breaking down uh, uh, the play. So yeah, that's boost my game uh, dramatically. Rosen graduated from the Israeli Institute of Technology in Haifa. I, I believe they are the Golden Gophers. Rosen has the action, and it's good to have Kings raised to 300,000. No choice. If you want to run deep, you have to go and have rail or like you know, screen time. What can you do? Dobridge, 32nd last year's main event. He's got Ace King. Bad time for Ace King. Frankly, I don't think there's ever a good time for Ace King. It's just a drawing hand. We'll raise and a three bet for the big stack. Anybody else want to get involved? Folded back around to Rosen. Is it time? Only 3.7 behind. There's no time like the present. And there he goes. Dobrich happy to get it in there, but it's worse than he probably thought. I think he said the engineer is a luck box. <laughs> Dobrich with diminished outs with his ace king. Here's the flop. All good news for pocket kings. A uh, cooler for Dobrich, but he's got the big stack to withstand it. Wow, this might be the blankest board for Ace King ever seen in the main event. Rosen looking to hang around. The man with the beard will need an ace on the river to knock out the man with the hat. The river card. And eight. That makes Rosen's double up official. I absolutely knew Rosen would double up there, Lon. Uh, what made you so sure? We're not going to show a feature on the guy and then knock him right out, are we? How, how stupid do I look? On a scale of 1 to 10, or should I use the Likert scale? The Las Vegas Strip, home to the World Series of Poker for the first time. What a series it has been. With the main event down to 59 players. The crowd buzzing with anticipation with each elimination happening. And right now, 2020 champion Damian Salas at risk with Ace Jack against the pocket nines of Danny Hanawa. Salas, another cool, calm, and collected customer. No emotion until the hand is over. Salas prepared to take the lead. Big flop for Salas. You'd never know it looking at him. Hanawa, a 40-year-old business owner from Farmington Hills, Michigan. Seems unconcerned with the outcome. Ace is up for Damien. Now he just needs to dodge a nine. Yeah, how about Hanawa? Sipping a Red Bull. Looks like he might be watching an Astros game somewhere off camera. <laughs> One card to come. And there it is, 2020 champ with a double up to stay in the game. And now Salas celebrates. And you know, I think there are some imposters on that rail. Some of them don't even know who Salas is. 3.7 million, lots of wood yet to chop, but he still has his seat. Tournament summary brought to you by Zenny Eyewear for everyone. Salas, the last remaining former champ, his countryman, Papo MC at the feature table, sitting right next to 35-year-old poker pro Aaron Mermelstein. Aaron can box, dance, hoop. He's a renaissance man of sorts. So I'm from Philadelphia originally, and uh, I've been playing poker since I was 15. I've been playing the main event on and off for the past 20 years or so. Uh, this is the deepest I've, I've really gone. When I'm not playing poker, I'm playing basketball. I've uh, been doing some boxing, dance classes. I recently got into uh, bachata and salsa dancing. So yeah, I live in Miami. I don't speak any Spanish, but I wanted to get into the culture. So, you know, I had to pick up at least some, some Spanish dancing classes. Heck, I live in LA. You don't see me picking up any skateboarding while texting classes. Aaron is in the big blind with ace nine. I am or creep opened under the gun with ace tray of hearts. Matthew Shepsky in seat nine tagged along with queen 10 of clubs. Oh, Mermelstein makes the call. Three will see this flop. Three will see the flop. Uh, top two for Mermelstein, top one for Orkreef, club draw for Shepsky. A little something for everyone, like Disneyland. Check for Mermelstein, 650 from Orkreef. Yeah, he's got something. Well, Orkreef opened with a suited ace, flopped top pair, and he's got 0.3% next to his name. It's a tough game. Shepsky. 
with the flush draw. Shepsey studied business management at the University of Illinois Chicago. Flush draw management would have been a wiser course of study. <laughs> Says he always knew he would be a poker pro, even though he's got a higher degree. Marmelstein also studied business management in college at Penn State. Playing against a flush draw management would have been a wiser course of study. Aaron is a two-time World Poker Tour champion. Marmelstein with the check raise to over two and a half million. Now he turns up the heat on or grief who suddenly five, feels yeah. very much alone in this world. Yeah, looks very uncomfortable with top pair. I played with those exact chips he is riffling with his right hand on day one of a World Series event this year. I forgot who took them from him. <laughs> and he finally does release. Yeah, the right decision. For Shepsky, this is shove or fold. He knows he's behind it simply if he feels like gambling for his main event life right now. Marblestein putting him to the test. All in. Let's go. How much? I don't think I'm folding. So. How much? Is 4.6. Two million more. Marblestein makes the call. Shepsky at risk. During the first few days of the main event, he was pretty much treading water, but he's found life here on day six. Can he keep it going? You know, I, you know, I don't okay. get it. Studying business management leads to this. Wow. Did either this of these guys even go to class, or were they just like football players? You know what? Put in the jack of diamond on the turn. Uh, here we go again. Jack of diamond. <laughs> Fair? It's good, good for TV. I'll take jack of diamond. Uh, Five hello. of diamonds. Give him a queen. Hmm? Give him a queen. Nah, that's not right. Red. Shepsky needs any club but the nine. Bring the black car. Uh, I don't know, space uh, or club, but black car. River Can you car? Like slow, slow? There he you gets go. there. Yes! How's that real? <laughs> How is that real? <laughs> Did you watch Super Bowl 51? Freaking Patriots. Matthew Shepsky has found his stride and an 11 million chip pot. Yeah, finally, Shepsky with a decent stack. Black car. Okay. Black car, I'm busy say space or club, but I want to say the black car. The elation when you river one of your eight outs to survive. Matthew Shepsky stays in the game. Aaron Merblestein does not get the knockout. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. The poker world's attempts to make the game more equitable for women and attract as many female players as possible. Got a shot in the arm this year with strong showings by the likes of Farrah Galfon, Gail Bowman, former WSOP national champ, Lonnie Huey. Relative newcomer, Daniela Rodriguez Tavares. Oregon poker pro and PLO specialist, Angela Jordison. And Shelby Wells, who had a top 100 finish. One female player remains in this year's field, Effie Litsu, the Greek-born financial executive living in New York, sitting on a nice stack of 11 and a half million. Maybe she'll follow in the footsteps of another New York amateur and banker who won this thing in 2002, Robert Varconi. We've had a couple of recent top 50 finishes by women, Kelly Menken in 2018, and our colleague Maria Ho finished 22nd in 2020, but not many saw it. That event was mostly online. Wouldn't that make her the last woman sitting? Anyway, Lon, why don't you take us over to a table full of men, just like our forefathers would have wanted it. On <laughs> to feature table B, one of these men is Croatian Matija Dobrich, whose chip stack has been up and down on day six, but he's confident in his style and ready to best last year's deep run. This is actually my second year in Vegas, second main event ever. So last year I, I had also day seven, I was 32nd place. But this year is really, I feel really good. I'm really calm. Last year I had a big problem because like 
that adrenaline rush, like first time in Vegas, couldn't sleep, couldn't uh, think, couldn't do anything. But this year goes really smooth, like everything go goes like I wanted it to go. Yeah. Most of people do big mistake and play this tournament like every other tournament. And that's why I uh, wrote uh, for question what I would say uh, to players who want to play main event, just type is right. Tight is right. Uh, I think he wants his opponents to play tight so he can get his bluffs through. Dobert with pocket trays. Matthew Sue with pocket tens raised under the gun to 400,000. Oh. Dobert says when it comes to poker, he loves the tournament game and the various pressures it presents. And by the way, our first president, George Washington, liked to play poker. He also was a fan of cockfighting, horse racing, bingo, and slavery. Hey, three out of five ain't bad. What's wrong with bingo? Rosen oh. comes along with another pocket pair. The man in the hat. I like that hat. Eights, tens, and trays. Advantage trays. Rosen checks his eights. I've got to tell you, I don't think either Sue or Dobrich could make that hat work. I am surprised Sue did not continuation bet. That was a good flop for pocket tens. Dobrich, not going to wait with that big hand. 400,000. Man with the hat makes the call. That was a pretty good flop for pocket eights as well. Sue rests his case. Wow, uh, impressive from Sue. Huh? Gets away without putting a single chip in bad. Dobrich with the monster, heads up. Turn card seven of hearts. Rosen also cashed, as you mentioned earlier, in the 2018 main event, in which I believe he wore a baseball cap backwards. <laughs> well, he's certainly upgraded. He checks here. Dobrich, two main events entered two top 60 finishes. How can it be? With a set now, 1.4 million. If Rosen knew we just showed a feature on Dobrich, he could not call here. Plus, Dobrich has a dog. He's a huge favorite to win this hand. <laughs> Rosen, two check calls, buying himself a river. River card. King of Diamonds. Dobrich, best. Rosen checks again. This is a pretty dry board. Yeah. So this set of threes has got to feel like the nuts to Dobrich. Oh, wow. He wants all of Rosen's stack. And the man in the hat can only beat a bluff. There's no real bluffs out there. Nice fold. And I believe people who have dogs run good, present company accepted. Dobrich scores on the flop, stacks the spoils of victory, which add up to just shy of 20 million now. Kim took the lead away from Dobrich. Dobrich trying to get back at Brian Kim right now. Across the way at our table seat, Eddie Sabat on his feet again, all in and ahead with Ace Jack against the 10 Jack held by Kareem Rebey at seat three. There's the flop. A Jack for both. Sabat with the Ace kicker. He's still a solid favorite. Sabat now one street away from a double up. Only a 10 would eliminate Eddie Sabat. Oh, Zeta! a 10! Zeta! How good does this guy run? Zeta! Ugly. Zeta! Ugly. Sabat knocked out of this main event. Wow, a tough beat for a good guy, Eddie Sabat. His best main event results since he finished 16th eight years ago. Oh, well, a little more time to work on his golf game. Before the break, Eddie Sabat saw his dreams of main event glory get obliterated with a River 10. Right now, he's down talking with Kara Scott. 
We've lost Eddie off of the table. Now, you and I were talking right before we went back to play about how grueling this tournament is and how kind of physically taxing it is. Can you talk about what that's like? Because you also made that really deep run in 2014, I believe, so yeah. you really understand what this is. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> physical and mental aspect of this tournament is unlike no other. And that's why you see so much emotion out of players, especially me, especially all in. <laughs> believe me, if that 10 didn't come, I w you would have seen me explode. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you just go home. So you play 13 hours, go home, try to eat, sleep, maybe take a shower, and then listen to some, like, soft piano music. <laughs> and get some sleep. But we were even talking about the fact that, you know, some players are losing weight here during this time because it is, like, the mental focus, but the physical as well, it is a sport, would you say? Oh, yeah, it is like a sport. I lost, In 2014, I lost 11 pounds when I got 16. Yep. And then now I was down, it was half a... Uh, we were day six, but to day 10, I would have lost probably like 15 pounds. I lost five pounds already. So, yeah. so poker is a sport. And thank you again for talking to us. We really appreciate it. And I know we'll see you here deep again in no, the main it, event. It's a pleasure to be back in the Magic. It's just beautiful here. Good to see you again. And uh, you'll see me again, obviously. Obviously. Good to see you too. Thank you. <laughs> Poker is not a sport, and neither is synchronized swimming, rhythmic gymnastics, beer pong, backgammon, or golf. 58 remain. Back to our feature table, Aaron Mermelstein. Big stack the last few days of play. Today's been kind of a correction day. New correction coming with Kings. Mermelstein is 35, but he is not a moneymaker baby. He says he started playing poker after watching Robert Varconi win in 02. Ah, the Varconi effect. All right, a raise with the Kings to 400,000. That's a min raise right now. Or Creep with Ace Jack. Sin not 21 bigs. Gonna soon be hating life. Now those are big chips. Those are raisin chips. There's a three bet to 1.2 million. Man, or Creef is running rough. He folded pocket jacks in a hand in which he would have tripled up, and now he three bets into kings. Kogel, Jack 10 of hearts. Normally a hand you'd sing ballads to, but maybe not here. Did you start with seven? Uh, and six and a half. Is Kogel really thinking about four betting here? Taking his time to do a lot of things. Back around to Mermelstein and his Kings. Early in his poker days, Mermelstein moved to LA and lived in a rental owned by my buddy Laker Steve. Man, that had to be a mistake. <laughs> Ah, here it all comes to put Orcrief all in and a snap call. Oh my God. What the? Wow. Orcrief had decided to go with it if Mermelstein shoved. And Kenny Tran can't believe he called off with Ace Jack offsuit. Maybe Orcrief is the one that Ace Jack has been kind to all the years, but nobody else loves Ace Jack that much. Mermelstein loves this situation. All right, Earth the flop. Mermelstein still in good shape to get back in the black today. The 43-year-old from Miami, pretty forlorn right now. Ten, no, ten, ten. Nine, oh. and a gut shot for O'Kree. Ten. Creek. No, ten on the turn. Now, I don't know, Ru. I don't know why you do that. No, I want a ten on the turn. You don't want to do that? No. Bad? I just don't anti-sweat people. Come on, Spot man. Ace or a 10? No, it's not there. Or Creep got a little ambitious, and it's payday time. Let them sweat. I'm talking about the turn. Oh, TV. Oh, I thought you wanted a 10 on the Mermelstein with chips is a dangerous Mermelstein. I thought you were cheering for a 10 on the river. I was like, what the? And these guys are like a one never-ending cat fight. No, I want everyone who all in short stack to go broke. Well, that's just part six of their unending mini-series about the value of calling a sweat card. You needled him enough. Huh? You needled him enough. Who? Oh, you. Neither who? Him. That's your free food voucher. You eat as much as you want. Do not offer this guy that. He say you eat as much as you want. Oh, Sam. That's a really bad flop. That's as bad as it can be. He's been doing this all day. Like needling people when they're all in. I feel like there's a common ground between being sympathetic to people when they're all in or like misconstruing how you're being funny. You have to be a moron <laughs> to not know that's a joke. You're just trolling the whole time. But I can't believe I'm listening to this. <laughs> hey! 
The way Tran says Bo Ron just slays me. <laughs> Kenny Tran on the button. Ball to two him. Ace Jack. Here, Ace Jack is okay. There, not so much. Raised to 450. Nunley. Will Nunley. King Queen. The only former rugby player slash current poker pro who <laughs> wears a neck gator. You've done the research. Yes. He says all in for almost 4.9 million. 24 bigs into the middle with King Queen. Figuring Tran might be raising light from the button. But a good day for Shevsky. He's going to keep it that way for the moment. Back to Tran. Kenny was not raising light. But does he want to risk more than half his stack here with ace jack off suit? The exact hand he was surprised to see or Kreef call off with. This is a different spot, different situation. He's hearing those echoes in his head right now, maybe. Well, this feels like a coin flip, or his ace could even be dominated. And this also has a lot to do with Nunley's table image. Has he been playing tight? Trent, definitely. A little bit squirrely about his decision. Let's numbly live. Oh, okay. Tran plays nice, it safe. Nice. Will Nunley is happy about that. Kogel might be happy about that, but he's going to remain mute, a wise choice. A uh, sort of tail of the tape here with these two. Tran has 15 years on Kogel, a bracelet, and over a million and a half more in winnings, but Kogel has the edge with caches. Well, Kogel has 17 caches, but only 55K in winnings. If you break that down into an hourly rate, I think the dealer is making more money than he is. A couple of footnotes, though. Tran usually plays only the main event, so he's not going to have a lot of World Series caches. Kogel, meanwhile, does have three circuit rings. Shepsky open for 450 with ace nine. Kogel has the action in the big blind with ace seven. He's gonna come along. There's the flop. Shepsky, top pair with a big stack. Kogel, open ended. He checks. This is two bearded guys, both married with kids. Kogel given Shepsky the once over, the twice over, the three times over. He likes staring at his opponents. All in. Wow, Kogel gives him the 3.48 million over now. Thank you. And there's the call, Kogel on the hook. On, Shepsky's got the best of it. Kogel on the hook and behind. Like Tran decides to spare Kogel it's at nine. the moment. Shevsky trying to continue building his stack. Kogel trying to keep his seat. Third card. Oh, good ah! luck indeed. Kogel finds his straight. Let's go, baby. So Kogel go. is going to survive. With a river seven, they would chop. Six. Pair the board. Pair indeed. Let's go. Oh, yeah, so heck. That was a chop. Shepsky takes the hit. Kogel nah, takes the double. He could have chopped. Yeah, yeah, he could have chopped. He could have chopped. He could have chopped. chopped. He's not drawing dead. He could have chopped. Shepsky's still with a big stack. It's possible. Yeah, for once, he can afford it. 3.475. What's wrong with this move? Get in. Thank you. <laughs> What the f is wrong with this dealer? You don't like it when I win the pot? <laughs> I'm sorry? You said what's wrong with the dealer? What'd you say? I didn't hear you. I can't hear you, dude. What'd you say? Lucky turn card keeps Kogel's dreams alive. Kenny Tran now has to sit with this guy for a little while longer. Blood pressures are high when stacks get low. Here on day six of the World Series of Poker Man event, 55 players remain from a near record starting field of 86-63. The winner scoring eight figures for just the fourth time in the 53 years of this tournament has been held. Kenny Trant open for a min raise, 400K, with two red tens. Pop OMC on the button with a suited ace and six million more chips than Kenny. <coughs> 
I appreciate Kogel coughing into his t-shirt, but perhaps he should have borrowed Nunley's neck gear. Lococo with a three bet to a million four. Lococo is a battle rapper. According to Kogel, Tran is a battle needler. I like that. <laughs> so back to Tran. It's pocket tens. Tran originally was mostly a no limit hold'em guy, but he has branched out to mix game cash, so now he torments table mates in many different poker variants. He was born in Vietnam. His dad was actually an American GI whom he never met. Became a US citizen in 1999, and yeah, it was a 10's full for Kenny Q, the poker face, and a check. Lococo would need running aces or running jacks here. You know, I think running jacks would be more painful for Tran to absorb. <laughs> It's possible Popo MC might continue here, though. But considering all the hands that Tran would open and call a three bet with, what does he think that he would fold out? Wow. Well, Coco being true to self, he is aggressive at the poker table. And there was a bet of 1.7 million. Do you feel lucky, Papa? Tran loving it. Kenny put together a check raise to 3.4 million and a snap fold. Yeah, I thought Tran would slow play that, but he apparently believed Popo MC had a big pair or a jack. Yeah, the easiest 3 million Tran will make today. And with that pot, he passes Lococo on the chip count. Thank you. So fun doings here at our main feature table. Let's go next door to table B. Short stack Henry Fisher in the traditional all-in posture on his feet, ace eight of spades. Called by poker pro Asher Kniff with king jack of spades. Kniff pairs up both with Broadway draws. Kniff out flopping the 41-year-old California pro. Fisher now in D doo doo. No nine, no good. Kniff hits his straight. Fisher now hoping for just half the pot. Yeah, he needs a king to chop and survive. He does not get it. Good luck. So Fisher knocked out by Asher Kniff, 55th place, nearly 146K. Thank you so much. Hugs all around. Uh, this table's like a Tupperware party compared to the feature table. Second straight main event cash, but this is best ever live poker score. Well done, Henry Fisher. Nothing easy about it. You got to run through the best to earn this title. Chip leaders suffer precipitous falls at the main event. And for James Hobbs, it's his turn to hit the showers. He's out in 53rd place for 176K. Brian Kim and Matia Dobrich better watch their backs. Well, why is it only eliminated players hit the showers? I hope everyone who makes day seven takes a shower as well. Some poker pros, though, are anti-shower. <laughs> Back to our main feature table, Effie Litsu has the action. Queen Jack for 10.7 million chips, just above the average right now. There's Master Plumber, Rob Welch, Wooster Mass, Ace Queen, a raise to 625. Litsu with the rare open limp, then we get the raise from the 49-year-old. Now, Ace King for the biggest stack. Wow, Bryant Kim has something to work with. Yeah, the biggest stack with the biggest hand. Welch has Litsu dominated, but Kim has Welch dominated. This is reminiscent of the World Order in 1872 vis-a-vis -vis Britain, Russia, and China. Kim just with the call. So folded back to Litsu. And wow, one time she makes the call. She is in third place right now. And so it's top pair, top kicker for Welch, top pair, bad kicker for Litsu. Broadway draw for Kim. Litsu checks. Welch, arm tattoos, strike one. Sunglasses atop baseball cap, strike two. Chewing gum, strike three. Sorry, buddy. But he's got the best hand and bets 925. Now, to Iceman, Kim. There's the call. 
Litsu with top pair. Bad time for top pair. Litsu in a precarious spot here in her first main event. Oh, she's seen these boys get busy ahead of her. Yeah, nice fold. Very nice. Heads up now. Seven of clubs. Welch still good. I hate Ace Queen more than I hate $15 avocado toast. <laughs> but it looks like Welch is going to make it work. 4.2 million in the middle. Welch puts out, huh? 650. 650? 650. That, that's too small. You're, you're giving Kim seven and a half to one to see a river. The dealer could call this. Did they really increase dealer wages? <laughs> Sorry, no. Well, this still may give Welch a signal, just a call from Kim. Nine on the end. Pair of queens, good here. Welch now checks. No value bet from Welch. Very passive. You know, a spade draw would have missed. I guess King Jack got there for a straight. Interesting what Kim does now. Uh, he could go to showdown with Ace High, but I think he's got to put Welch on some type of pair. Might he try to get Welch off of a one pair hand? Yeah, he's putting Welch all in. And Rob tattooed himself into this corner. King Jack's good. Mm. Wow, Welch folds his hand face up and says King Jack is good. Kim put them all in, and Welch wanted no part of it. Kim using the power of the big stack and position to fatten up at the feature table. All right, let's go next door. We saw 2020 champ Damian Salas double through Danny Hanawa. Now Damian trying to get the rest of Danny's chips. Hanawa on the left at risk with King Nine of Diamonds. Salas has Ace Queen. What these guys again? Yeah, they, they look like they were waiting for test results. All right. Dominic bring out the flop. Salas now a better than four to one favorite, flopping that ace. Hanawa now on the brink. Salas remains stone-faced. Hanawa, distribution company for a convenience store. Wife expecting the first kid gets no love on the turn. Hanawa looking for a king or a nine here, or Salas will break into song and dance. Cue the band. I'm telling you, these are all Chippendale dancers on break. They've never even met Damian Salas. Damian trying to remain relevant in the main event. Hanawa is busto, 52nd place for 176 grand. Baby needs new shoes. Tournament always full of new faces. One familiar face, 2020 champ Damian Salas, knocking out foes, threatening to make his third main event final table in five years. Don't doubt it. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high Roller Bowl 7 champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Day six is a tough one to survive. 49 now remain with a bust out of Jorge Ho, getting some love from his friends and soon 176,000 other consolation notes coming his way. First main event cash, it's a goodie. Late in the night, we go back to center stage, Valley's Event Center. Action on Will Nunley, licking his chops, pocket kings. Did you ever wear a neck gaiter to cover up a hickey in high school? Door? Never got a hickey in high school. A raise to 400,000 from Nunley. Will starting the hand with 5.6 million. Over to Aaron Mermelstein, big blind. Queen 10 of spades. It's a pretty big hand in the big blind. Pretty easy to defend. Aaron loves the dance, and dance he shall with Nunley. <clears throat> Bring it. Much bigger stack. Flop. A pair of tens and one spade for Mermelstein. But Nunley's Kings reign. Aaron checks. Top pair on the board for Mermelstein. Good spot for Nunley. Nunley needs to get value, needs to build 
a stack here on day six, betting exactly half pot. Mermelstein's buddies call him Merm with a perm. <laughs> and I'm told when Merm with a perm loses a big session, he eats more chocolate than anyone on the planet. Wow. It does have an aphrodisiac built into it, so not a bad thing. Nunley just trying to keep Mermelstein around. Aaron with top pair, not going anywhere. Just a call. Turn card now. Is a queen. Oh my. Mermelstein turns the tables on Nunley with queens up. Now, Mermelstein was in trouble on the flop. Nunley now in trouble on the turn. You know, this looks like a pretty safe card for Pocket Kings. Nunley bets a million one after Aaron checked again. Mermelstein says he's gone broke multiple times playing poker. He might want to break Will Nunley right here. Nunley will follow Aaron anywhere right now. He says all in with a check raise. All in, all in. Nunley might be having Zilong Zhang flashbacks mm -hmm. right now. How many times in this main event have we seen him with big hands in tough spots? I mean, what did he run into? Nine Jack got there for a straight. Would Mermelstein be trying to get him off a one pair hand with this bully bet? Will Nunley tortured with his pocket kings in hand. I feel for Will Nunley right here. Will makes the call and pocket kings no good. One card to come. And Nunley sees the bad news. Nunley now with just eight outs to stick around. Well, better than Jack Nine. I have kings. It's okay. Relaying the bad news You're to his rail. Kings are at risk. Will Nunley being done in by Mermelstein if he doesn't hit the river. How about this? Pay the ball so it's 50 50. He might make full hand, he might have maybe two pair. How about that? Is that fair? Tran just can't help himself. Here's the river card, no and Nunley is done from this hey, main I'll event. Stay. Good job, man. Hey. Let's play with him. Nunley out. Good playing, guys. You and Mills have like a hasty a exit for Will. Yeah, That's going to sting for a while. Oh. We'll soon collect a six figure payday at his second main event. That will help a little bit. On day one, they just wanted to survive. On day two, they just wanted to chip up. On day three, they just wanted to make the money. Now, on day six, they just want to make day seven for a chance to make history at the World Series of Poker main event final table. These are the waning hours of day six at the main event. As the numbers dwindle inside Bally's in Paris, Las Vegas, the payouts grow to career highs for many. Hi, everybody. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad. One player who made his career high at the 2021 main event was Alejandro Lococo, seventh place for over $1.2 million. Better known as rapper and streamer Papo MC, Lococo could pull a Mark Newhouse this year and final table twice in a row. Now that's a mic drop. To Lococo's left, the aggressive Kareem Rebe with Queen Tennis Page trying to knock out Rudy Cervantes in seat eight, wearing the green shirt, holding pocket sixes. On the flop, Rebe takes the lead with a couple of queens. Rebe is vocal between hands, stone silent during them. He has a PhD in mathematics. A nine on the turn, Cervantes has one last chance to survive. Ribe with twice the stack of his opponent. River card, a blank for Cervantes. His main event is done out in 48th place and a nice chunk of change. Cervantes leaves with his smartphone and complimentary water. Two more knockouts and the remaining field gets a 40K pay raise. Ribe stacks his chips. He's got a lot of flair and shops for uh, most of his clothing with his eyes closed. What do you mean? 
mean, like... 27 million now for Rebay. You thought Lococo and Rebay together made for a tough table. Our main featured table is stacked in seat seven, the man they call Sick Call, Kenny Tran. The 08 bracelet winner with over a million and a half dollars in World Series caches. A truly sick call would be if Kenny Tran phones Nathaniel Kogel on his birthday. Those two have not gotten along so far. To its left, big stack of Matija Dobrich, a fierce Croatian who, like Lococo, is making his second deep run in as many years here. Dobrich and I call each other on our birthdays every year. He's rather chatty. Brian Kemp. Left of your screen, made it 525 with Ace Queen. Next in line, Nathaniel Kogel with pocket fives. How much are you playing with? Uh, started with 11.2. Dobrich now with a big blind. Dobrich with the suited one gapper, the Michael Strahan. Dobrich with the defendable hand and the big blind. Kim and Kogel each staring at Dobrich as if to say, Get out of our pot, please. Get out of our pot. And he will defend. Three to the flop. Dobrich getting better than six to one on a call there. A couple of 20 million something stacks in the 10 milli stack of Kogel. Flop is all black. Dobrich takes the lead with a pair of eights and checks. No fun flop for Kim. Now he checks. I ran into Kim at Neiman Marcus last week and told him you don't always have to see that. Good to see he was listening. <laughs> Kogel sees an opening after a couple of checks with his pocket fives and puts out 825. Well, Kogel knows there are only nine over cards to his pocket fives <laughs> and decides what are the chances that any of those three cards hit either of my opponents. Dobrich now with the best hand. Dobrich and I share the same belief. To live is to suffer, to survive is to find some meaning in the suffering. 20 years with you. It's all clear now what he meant. <laughs> Turn card, another eight, and whatever trepidation Dobrich was feeling just evaporated. Now he wants to lead out. Oh. Wow. Almost 1.2 million. He decides he does not want to give Kogel a free card, perhaps drawing to a flush or a straight. Ogle with the pocket fives and eights on board. Yeah, I would consider a fold here. As we used to say in the joint, every pot wow. does not have your name on it. There's a raise. He says, take that. And Dobrich says, I will. Well, I'm surprised again. Kogel must think Dobrich is on a flush or straight draw. But it would be kind of weird to wait until the, the board pair to bet your draw. That is what the catbird seat looks like, ladies and gentlemen. That's just a call for a million 380. I remember Dobrich once told me life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. River card, six of hearts. Dobrich with the hammer. Three eights are good here. You can stare all you want. Mr. Kogel. Oh, Dobrich wants to lead out again, Norman, here. Three million. Yeah, Dobrich, Doc, that's a second time in a row. Very unusual. Betting patterns in this hand more confusing than Bermuda Triangle flight patterns. <laughs> Kogel appears a bit of flummoxed. Hey, Nathaniel. Dobrich let out on the turn and the river. This is a 10-foot high graffiti shouting out, I've got a hand. Daniel Kogel, very close to paying off Dobrich, and he does. That's good. Yep. Yeah! Dobrich over Listen. 30 million now. Boy, the Croatian got a lot of value out of that hand. And Dobrich thinking, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. <laughs> After a nondescript big nice. blind defense with 10-8 suited. Let's take a look at the payouts brought to you by Stormex, the easiest way to earn crypto. Kogel thought he was going to be cruising into the next pay zone of 200K, but now at risk of being one of the two players left out of that pay bump. To table B now, Asher Kniff sits, <laughs> Vegas Pro, lots of results and chips. He spoke to us about the right attitude to have when playing this crazy game.
Well, they said, what's your biggest strength and what's your biggest weakness? And I said, my biggest strength is I have too much fun. And my biggest weakness is I have too much fun. Oh, well, well there you go. Funny how life works out that way. To me, the experience is as important as the result. You know, I really want to make sure that uh, I enjoy myself and make the most of it, especially something like this. You never know when it'll come along again. So I always make the most of it. And every so often I find myself a little caught up in it, perhaps. And uh, I'm like, oh, wait, have I? Maybe I should be paying a little more attention, but yeah, I'm making friends at the table and just enjoying it. I don't make friends at the table, I make enemies. And then I keep my enemies closer than my friends. Ah, t-shirt material. Big blind Kniff, Queen 10, facing a two million chip shove from Ken Bame. The small pocket pair. Bame, 53-year-old Chicago lawyer with two circuit rings. I can't, I can't help you. Kniff won the WPT World Championship for nearly a million bucks in 2015. Kniff does make the call here to put Bame at risk. Well, he could have helped. Yeah, he put him in the And then just build him for an hour's work. <laughs> just about a quarter of Asher's stack to make this call. Bame ahead right now with the pocket trays. Just do three in the window and be like, boom. Can he tran here? All right. The threes are still good for Bame. Bame went to Stanford Law. Mm. They were better. Jack would be a fun sweat. We're not trying to sweat. No, do you want to sweat? No. Oh, okay. Turn card pairs Kanef, and now Bame looking for river salvation. Uh, that was worse than a sweat for Bame. He needs a two outer now, a three on the river, or his main event is over. His main event is over. Yeah, great playing with y'all. It's great playing with y'all. People always take their water. It's becoming very take precious. Take care, guys. Oh, looks like Bane had a bunch of friends at this table. Thank you. <laughs> Bane takes his leave. Asher Kniff into double figures with almost 11 and a half million. Well, now, now I'm happy to call it. <laughs> Before the break, our 45 remaining players were on a pay bubble and just now stepped up the ladder thanks to the elimination of Victor Lee. Victor, formerly at table B, he's now doing the requisite round of handshakes before heading off to the pay cage to collect his $176,000. My goodness, everybody has seen that cat video by now. <laughs> All right, over at table B. We'll find engineer Nadim Rosen, Canadian resident. And speaking of Canadians, Kara Scott is here to tell us more about Vadim. Vadim Rosen has had a frustrating day six. He said he's been card dead for much of the past few levels. There are plenty of opportunities at his table for exploitation, and he's just not been able to take advantage of them just the way he wanted to. He's also dealing with sleep deprivation. The last couple of days, he's not had much sleep at all. Yesterday for the dinner break, he said he even went and found a friend's sofa to go and crash on instead of being able to go and have some food. Now, it's important for those of us watching from home to remember that sleep deprivation at this point, because of the adrenaline, because of the nerves, because of whatever reason is a real thing and it's definitely playing into their decision making. When I have trouble sleeping, I put on my best of Lon McCarran DVD. Hey, oh, that was a... That was about four no, I didn't like that. Okay, thank you. Appreciate Pocket that. jacks for Rosen here on the button. A raise to 550. Snuck one in there on me, Chad. Kniff with pocket nines now. Kniff says that if he wasn't playing poker for a living, he would have gone into sports management. Asher and I usually don't say this, you made the right decision going into poker. Sports <laughs> management is a one-way ticket to Palookaville, and Palookaville has no good restaurants. You want a circuit ring right here at Valley's. All in. Ooh, all in. With the bigger stack than Rosen. And Rosen makes the call with the jacks, and here we go. The table neighbors will square off. Rosen likes to record his all-ins for his upcoming Vadim Does Vegas video. <laughs> I like it. All right, Jack's at risk and ahead. What are they? Oh, wow, a set. Pocket Jack's must have a different mojo above the 47th parallel. <laughs> Kniff with few outs. 
Seven of hearts. And Asher now with a straight draw. Rosen does not need a seven. He just needs to avoid an eight for a straight for Kniff. But it's another seven. Rosen secures the double up in these two pretty much swap stack sizes. Rosen easily survives. But his rail wanted blood. They wanted quads. They wanted a full house. They wanted Asher Kniff's head on a stick. He's such a nice guy, though. Appreciate the response. Yes, sir. Appreciate the response. It's poker. Yeah. All right, back to our main feature table. Action on Matthew Shevsky in the small blind. He's holding King 10, 34 picks in his stack. Brian Kim got things going with a six of spades and a raise to 525. Shevsky loves to golf. He says he made a hole in one once in which the ball never left the ground. Wow, impressive. Shevsky with a three bet, really stepping out a bit here. Frank Frenaro on the big blind from Sewell, New Jersey, near Philly. Oh, we're good. Oh, there's a raise here. Did he call it? There's a raise here. He's, He's still in it. This guy raised. Five seats still in it. Well, you're all in anyway, Frank. Yeah, he hadn't exposed his hand. Pocket sevens. And now back to Kim. He needs just over a million more to call. He does just that. What's his total? Killing for less? Fanaro seemed sheepish and embarrassed, but hey, it was an honest mistake. He didn't realize there was three people left. He thought they were heads up. No harm, no foul. But he is all in with sevens. Ahead right now. Fanaro, 27-year-old New Jersey pro. Now just the flop. Fanaro at risk. That top pair for Kim. Broadway draw for Shepsky. Fanaro sevens, a distant hope. This is Kim's pose every single time until he acts. He also sits this way when he gets a manicure. Kim checks back. Turn card now. Another jack. Kim aces up now. I don't think Shepsky will put a wooden nickel into the side pot. He checks again. Kim got a psychology degree from UNLV and he never moved a muscle the entire <laughs> four years. Yeah, he moved a couple there to bet. 1,130,000. Shevsky. King 10. Just a gut shot. Nowhere to go but out. They're not all going in. I think he's going out. It would have been the same thing. It's a little tilting, though. I'm just looking at the damn page off thing. Fanaro looking for help on the river against Kim. I had my head turned around. I didn't see him raise. Didn't fit in there. Got to keep your head on a swivel. This is the main event, not some roadside Dairy Queen. Fanaro awaiting his fate. One card to come. Fanaro needs a seven and a seven only, or he is wamboozled. The river card, the four of hearts. Frank Fernaro becomes the latest victim of Brian Kim. It was the same result, but I'm looking like an idiot. I know what it's like to look like an idiot. That wasn't even close, son. Great result for Frank Fernaro. 44th place, big payday. And Brian Kim now. <laughs> 28 and a half million chips. So the field grows thinner and ever closer to day seven. Lee out in 45th, Fanaro in 44th. And no, Frankie, like Norman said, you don't look like an idiot. Once we reached that last pay jump, the eliminations came in a massive wave as the five remaining tables thinned out quickly. First, it was Cameron Blazevich knocking out David Levine in 43rd. Ah, uh, he was a chrome dome with a dream. Then Robert Reed busted in 42nd to the pocket aces of Tom Kunza. Ah, he was a contractor with a dream. Next up, Jacob Meeks exiting the room in 41st place. Ah, he was a crew cut with a dream. He gave his chips to Australian Adrian Attenborough. 
And lastly, it was Table B's Austin Wilson, who was eliminated in 40th place. Ah, he was a kid with a dream. It was Asher Kniff doing the job there with 7 8 That's off suit. Right, right. Each of those game, everyone. just won over $214,000. Meanwhile, Wilson's executioner, Asher Seven, Kniff, not only celebrating the knockout, but <laughs> now <back> celebrating <laughs> his birthday as Kara Scott has explored with Asher's supportive yeah. rail. Did she bring balloons? It's getting later at night and the rails are getting a little louder. Not that it's a competition, but if it was, I think this one might win. This is actually Asher Conniff's rail and they were singing happy birthday to him because as it hit midnight. It's his birthday. It's, his birthday. it's definitely his birthday. <laughs> How old is he now? I think he's 34. I'm, I'm a bad friend for not knowing his exact age. He is 34. 34. Yeah. And if he actually was able to make the final table just after turning 34, how amazing would that be for him? I think we would all love that, especially him, especially me. And the birthday present you can get. The best birthday present that you could possibly get. And how much does he deserve that as well, considering who he is as a person and a poker player? I mean, I don't think anybody deserves it as much as Asher. We would love to see him win it all. Go, Asher, go. Your rail is certainly behind you, and uh, they are cheering you on. on Happy birthday, Asher. Yeah. Birthday wishes from the booth as well. Asher, good luck the rest of the way. Well, birthday wishes from you. 34, what's the big deal? <laughs> We're hearing there's a buzz over table C. Papo MC has ace queen and is flipping for his tournament life against the pocket tens of Jeff Farns, appropriately wearing the black hat in seat seven. There's the flop. Six, nine, nine. Pocket tens are still good for Farns. Lococo in a meditative state, or perhaps trying to will an ace or a queen. Turn card. It's paint, but it's a king, no help to Papo MC. And Papo MC perhaps down to his final card. Wow. The river card, eight of hearts, and that means the end of Papo yeah. MC. Well, Lococo among several players we've seen finish in the top 100 here, both last year and this year. Lococo, Dobrich, mm -hmm. Kniff, and of course, Karai Aldemir, remarkable. Coco, a solid performer on stage and on the felt, he will be missed. A flurry of bust outs and a quiet finish for Alejandro Lococo. Day seven not meant to be for Papo MC this year. Our tournament summary brought to you by Zenny Eyewear for Everyone. 10 million for first. Alejandro Lococo recently departed, earned 1.2 million last year, but just a point two this year. Nathaniel Kogel has chipped up quite a bit since getting decimated in a recent hand. So he's not going home just yet, but when he does, they'll be real glad to see him. When I'm not playing poker, I'm taking care of my family. I got a wife and kid at home, a three-year-old boy. I've actually thought I was always going to be a good dad because I just like taking care of people and just making people happy. Family is everything to me. I, uh, I spend most of my time just trying to take care of them and just make life best for them. My wife's name is Shino. Shino would say that uh, I'm, um, I'm a champion. She'd say that I don't give up, that I have the heart of a lion, and that um, I'm a good dad. She, she also says that I, I talk too much. <laughs> Funny that his wife says he talks too much. Wasn't he accusing Kenny Tran of that? <laughs> right? He opened old school 3X with ace 10 of diamonds. Shepsky with the bigger ace. All in. He says all in. Just over four million. How much is it? 16 bigs from Shepsky. And it would be for about two thirds of Kogel's stack. Yeah. 475, four million. Olga with a suited ace 10. Does he want to gamble? Yeah, right. At best, he's got to figure it's probably a race. Both these guys call. need to rebuild call. their stacks for a day seven run, and there is the call to put Shevsky at risk. You may recall earlier, Kogel's in bad shape against no. Shevsky's ace nine with his ace seven, but turned a straight to double up. Kogel. Looking to knock out Shepsky, who's been on a nice streak here on day six. There's the flop. Ace King, still good for Shepsky. But he still looks a bit worried. Nice hand. Kogel with the intentionally premature nice hand. Four of Hearts brings a chop into the picture. 
We see a lot of players closing their eyes, trying to summon the card they want. But Coco had done that. River card. Nice. Hit. Double up for Shepsky. Nice. Shepsky keeps crawling through the sewer pipes, looking for the light at Four the one. end of the tunnel. Four million. I think you're mixing your metaphors there, sir. I don't even know what a metaphor is, and neither do you. Just carry on. Bluff called. There are not many outer tables, but that doesn't mean there's a lack of action. Antoine Labat, ninth place finisher in 2018, got his stack of seven million in the middle with aces against the talkative big stack Kareem Rabe with King Queen of Spades. Pocket aces for the pro against the fellow in the showy jacket with King Queen. Dumb. Oh, yeah, Dom or Queen, that helps a little bit. And another Queen for Rabe. Labat is crestfallen. What the heck? An ace now, or it's over in a flash for Labat. Yes! It's over in a flash. Yes! Antoine Labat out in 38th place. The, the guy in the showy jacket said we've seen Dom Dom before, then they get a Dom on the flop, a Dom on the turn, Queen Queen, how does that happen? Oh my goodness. Rebe joining Dobrich and Kim in the 30 million chip club. Back over to table C, we just saw Argentinian Alejandro Lococo busted. Now his fellow countryman, Damien Salas at risk, 2020 champ, a good shape, ace king against the ace eight of Sue Levy. Levy, 22-year-old Israeli pro. Salas again in his all-in pose. Each pair their kicker, making Salas a 10-to-1 favorite now. Never any in-hand emotion from Salas. Often closes his eyes behind those stylish shades. He's been grinding. He's finished the last two days of play with just 2.4 million. Turn card tray of spades. Damien still ahead. Only an eight will bust Damien Salas. He got an all-in for 3.7 million. And now he's got the double. A respectable stack of nearly 8 million. I tell you, this might be a rent-a-rail Salas is using. <laughs> what, I'm supposed to believe 77 guys just showed up from Argentina? Damien Salas, the last remaining former main event champ. Oh, he's got a few more hands to high five. Well. Seemingly, this guy has nine lives. We've seen him survive every all-in. Can he make a historic run to a third main event final table? The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. This final level of day six has seen nonstop action inside the Bally's Event Center. 37 to remain. $48,000 pay bump coming with one more knockout. Average stack 14 million. Kenny Tran raise has the action. He's five suited and a raise. He makes it 525. Tran's been pretty quiet, not finding much to play. Dobrich, big stack in the room. Sit this hand out. By the way, congratulations to Dan Zak. He is on the verge of being World Series Player of the Year. He won two bracelets, and in the 10K stud eight, he was down to one big bet on day one, but came back to take the title. Small blind Aaron Mermelstein. He's had a chip stack to envy for several days now. He is a real threat. Queen Jack offsuit, but he gets out of the way to Effie Litsu in the big blind, New York's banking exec. She actually went to school to be a finance executive and works in the business, huh? She's in the minority. Oh, geez. Sorry about that. You're good. And what a great first main event she is having. Now heads up against the seasoned bet, Kenny Tran. All right, here's the flop. Lon, neither player with a club, neither with a deuce, queen, or four. I saw it first. Yes, okay. Norman, you did. You did. We're very proud of you. I keep my head on a swivel. Huh. You can swivel it from where it is? Kenny getting some love with the ace five, turning a wheel. I also saw that Tramp made the wheel first, but I didn't want to upstage you again. No, nice job, Norman. Let's suit checked. 
Kenny checks back. Another queen on the end. Litsu. Going to make a move with the pot. But it's a tiny bet. 250. 250? Well, what is this, a summer clearance sale? <laughs> All Kenny Tran can do here is just fall. Folding not an option. Raising is not an option. This is a call 105% of the time. Ah, no, is it? Yes. She tried and failed. Well, that was sort of a mailed-in bluff attempt for the minimum. And I'm already erasing that hand from my recollection. Good idea. <laughs> Kenny stacking chips up a deep run at the main event. All right, let's get back to table B. Next door, one on the short stack. George Turner raised all in with ace nine for 2.9 million. Our Canadian engineer with ace 10 calls from the small blind. Big blind is Asher Kniff. He's got queen five and folds. <laughs> that is not quite what I wanted to say. Turner, 31 year old, a British pro. I gotta tell you, this table dynamic is so boring, it could cure Rosen's sleep like deprivation. <laughs> George Turner at risk and dominated. Rosen trying to pump his stack. There's the flop. Turner at risk. 475 and Turner with. Back to a straight draw, about the best I can say about his hand, Norman. Uh, this hand, Lon, reminds me of watching the walk signal at the intersection of Wilshire's pull that a change to don't six, walk. Six <laughs> in that row single Yeah. Okay, a legit straight draw for Turner now. Yeah, I'm getting excited, Lon. A six or a nine, and Turner will survive. River card? King of Diamonds, 10 kicker, okay, plays, scores the knockout. George Turner, yeah, that, that's out. <laughs> well, good run for George Turner, but uh, I've already erased that hand from my recollection. George will eventually be excited. His first ever World Series cash, over 214,000. And Rosen becoming a player, 16 million now in that hat. Him and Kniff are like chatty Cathy's. 36 remain, but at the main feature table, Nathaniel Kogel shoved his eight bigs with a couple of red tens. In the white hat, master plumber Rob Welch thinks about it with a stack of clubs. Our call. And he does make the call. He's in the small blind. Kim next with king 10 of clubs. He'll get rid of those. Tens, tens. Kogel hasn't recovered from that ace 10 call against Shevsky. And now racing for his main event life. Oh, baby. Best of it here right now. But two overs for Welch. Coco can't be thrilled about what he sees, but the best hand right now. One time. You got me. Right here. All spades. Neither has a spade, but Welch flops a wheel draw. Deuce. Deuce. Are both these guys chewing gum? Uh, this is the main event, not a Jonas Brothers concert. <laughs> Turn card, a no spotter, but another tray. So 10 outs for Welch to send Kogel home. River card, another five. Kogel will survive with a better two pair. Uh, that is Kogel's third double up on day six. And actually, I've already erased that hand from my recollection. It has been a stressful day six for Kogel, but things are looking up for him to see day seven. Nathaniel Kogel down to crumbs twice, but just doubled up and with 16 bigs, got something to smile about. <laughs> Oh, that you did? This is the first time I've seen him laugh like that the whole turn, like the whole tournament. He got him. Kogel on the button saw Brian Kim on his immediate right raise it up. Kim would do that with weaker hands than the ace queen suited he has, and Kogel wants it all. He raises all in for almost four and a quarter million. I'm not sure what Kogel is doing here. Why would you pile it in with ace nine off after Brian Kim has just raised? 
Maybe he doesn't left. actually want to make day seven. Kenny Tran, small blind, call. gives it up. Dover out. Kogel here's call. Can't love it. We need a nine. We need a nine. Kim just goes about his business like a professional hitman hired by the CIA counterterrorism unit to take out an anti-American threat at a Sunday flea market in Marrakesh. Wow. What happens when he gets to Spain? After the fly. All right. Kogel at risk. Dominated. An ace for both doing Kogel. No good. Yeah, no love for Kogel on that flop. But things can turn. The turn is next. Six of diamonds takes one out from Kogel as Kim picks up a flush draw. Yeah, really bleak for Kogel. He's going to need a non-diamond nine. Oh. Handshake time. Hey, out seat six. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Well, with you. Kogel and Tran yeah. exchange a yeah. tepid handshake, yeah, ending well. their bumpy relationship. Yeah, good luck, y'all. Hey, thanks. For the three-time yeah, World well. Series circuit winner with yeah. a great showing nice here in the big you. one. Thanks, appreciate it. Yes. Good luck Give him credit. He tried to direct his own nice destiny. Good luck, a terrific run, 36th place, well-earned payout, over 214,000. It's first main event cash. How about this guy looking like the real deal? Brian Kim executes the hit, target down. Over table B, We've got another main event cashing rookie in Imran Bojani. Kara Scott has more on this excitable amateur. First time players here in the main event has become kind of a theme for this year. One other player who's doing this for the very first time is Imran Bojani. Now, his friends on the rail were telling me that although he does have some good results, he hasn't actually been playing for all that long. He was out visiting his brother. Some friends convinced him to just jump in the main at the last minute, and that's what he did. They said he hasn't even had time to walk down the Las Vegas Strip yet. He just started playing, and now here we are on day six. Hey, I've got time to walk down the strip, but unlike this guy, I don't have 10K lying around my suitcase to just jump into the main event. Bojani, king, queen of spades, says, why not? Let's put them all in the middle. Asher Knipp, the birthday boy, just asking two. for a count. 1.7. Oh, it's actually more. 2.4. Actually, it's about a half million more. Honest mistake. To the big blind, David four. Diaz. Should be a double up. Right? Well, Johnny asking for a call, asking for a double up. Diaz, the bracelet winner from Houston, a rock solid pro. Can we sing, boys? We're getting a double up here. He's already dancing? Okay. Boy, Bajani seems so comfortable. I'm surprised Diaz is even considering a call here. Diaz is like, I should, but I don't want to, but I should. And he does. He got a call. Oh. King Queen. Oh. We're getting a double up. King Queen does King Ten. Yes. But I told you, let's get him, get him singing now. Don't stop singing. Dang. Bajani the anti Salas. Damien doesn't celebrate until the river card. <laughs> this guy is convinced he's doubling up even before we have a flop. Huh. Gotta love it. Maybe you should call King Ten to info. It's, it's like All right, Earth the flop. Uh, queen for Bojani all but seals the deal. Nice starting his birthday celebration two nights early here in Vegas. It's like a 70s discotheque in here. A lot of bad dancing. Gotta love it. Oh. Poor David Diaz didn't want to call. And now he has doubled up Bojani. <laughs> but Johnny having fun, what's not to love? David Diaz not having fun right now. 
Got a good round. No. Good I, I'm going to get your number and I want to invite you to South Africa. I would love that. I would love it. I'm inviting Asher yeah. to our, our, our place, eh? He's going to, he wouldn't want to come back Bro, to I'll take America. the first thing to South Africa. After I party. I got to celebrate my birthday. But I promise you, you won't want to come back here. I believe it. I'm ready. It's that nice there. I would, I'm, I would love to. You can see the, the, the company you will be with. <laughs> Imran might not be teaching dance classes soon, but he doesn't care. A double up means he's still in the game and a good bet to make day seven. I just want to be at the birthday party. Oh, shot he fired up after that double up. But I don't think Dancing with the Stars is calling anytime soon. He and Diaz back at it to see a flop for the minimum. And uh oh, Bojani with bottom two, Diaz with top pair. Bojani with the best of it again against Diaz. He checks. David with top pair. Put chips to work. 300,000. Like, the the mm -hmm. like, okay. Okay. I grew up in New York City, so Melbourne just got like a... Oh, check raise to 600,000. That's a min raise. Min raise on the flop confuses me more than abstract expressionism. I understand abstract expressionism. You went to UCSB and spent four years wiggling your toes in the Pacific Ocean. It's a statistical probability you understand abstract expressionism. Whatever, dude. Party on. <laughs> There's a call from Diaz. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Bujani just exposed his hand. Floor. What? What? Who? <laughs> We're oh, still you got a turn card. Oh, you bet 600,000. You asked me. Oh, no, no you said 600,000. Okay, so what happens now? The turn yeah, card. Now you gonna ask. Now you got to see a turn card. Okay, so it went bet, call, uh, raise, call, and then he flipped I, I over his cards. I thought that he went all in and I exposed my hand. Okay. So what happens now? Your hand's exposed. Yes, so? Still still exposed. Exposed. Can I still play? I can't unexpose it. We're can gonna I still play? We're going to play the hand. No, it's not exposed. Yes. Okay. Just slip it back over like it never happened. Is it on me? Yes, sir. Obviously, all in. Obviously. <laughs> my life. Right, there you can go. <laughs> now that's how you play a hand. Yes, I, I, did, I did not realize that. Huh? Yeah, I will be. I will be. A warning from the floor and a million new chips from Diaz. He's dancing real good. You shouldn't give him a warning. Wow. You shouldn't give him a warning? He's a great dancer. He's a great dancer. Come on. you got those hips? They're arguing that he's dancing so good, the floor should not even give him a warning for exposing his head prematurely. Well, they should have warned him for doing the dance. <laughs> Back to the main feature table from mid-position, Effie Litsu, the only woman left, shoved after a flop set of jacks into the pocket aces of Brian Kim, who called her. Well, the Lon McCarran Memorial hand was about to bury another victim, but it looks like the last woman standing will be able to sit down again. King of clubs on the turn. Him picking up some outs with a Broadway draw. So now an ace or a queen <laughs> would eliminate Effie Litsu. But she is favored to take a nice chip stack into day seven. River card. Eight of spades, and Effie Litsu will do just that. A yeah, big pot, and this perhaps a big step toward the final table. The only woman to ever have gotten there in the main event, Barbara Enright in 1995. <laughs> Brian Kim pays her off. Kim remains very healthy with about 33 million leftovers as Effie goes up to almost 19 million. Almost 70 big blinds, she's thrilled. There was some dead money in that pot as Rob Welch was involved but folded before he picked up the action. So it's going to be a very interesting day seven here at our new home in the Las Vegas Strip. This leaderboard brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. We are all Caesars. The new number one, Jeff Barnes. He's the one that took out Lococo. Dobrich in sixth place with nearly 30 million. Brian Kim in second place. And right now he's talking with Kara Scott.
Brian Kim. 35 players left. You have about 34 million chips going into day seven of the main event. So how big is this moment? It's huge. Um, ever since I first started playing poker, when I was 14, watching World Series on TV, this is the moment I've been dreaming about my whole life. So I'll uh, obviously do my best to take advantage. But yeah, it's it really is uh, a dream come true, and, and that's exactly how it feels. Was there a moment today where you kind of let yourself think about the final table? Do you let yourself think about it now? Absolutely. Uh, I don't think that the payouts right now relative to what they could be um, are, are that significant. So yeah, I'm doing everything I can to stay in. So it's on my mind always. Okay, well, good luck tomorrow. Thanks so much for talking to Thanks us. So much.